Awuga, this is a 12th cast. Hello, and welcome to a very special live Ganymede and Titan dwarf cast coming to you in video form for the first time ever on this, the 35th anniversary of Red Dwarf's first broadcast at 9 pm on Monday, the 15th of February, 1988. I'm Ian Symes, and with me, as always, are Jonathan Capps. Hello. And Danny Stevenson. Hello. <laughs> the order of the uh, change. Just don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, that everything could change. We could drop up there. We'll see what happens. But coming up tonight, we've got a jam-packed evening of programming for you. We'll be discussing the results of the Coral Canvas, the biggest ever poll of Red Dwarf episodes, we'd think. Uh, presenting the pilot episode of a brand new game show, Closh Busters. Plus opening the Waffly Floodgates to take your questions live in Waffleman Unplanned. But first, some actual breaking news, <laughs> which kind of threw the preparations for this Dwarfcast into complete disarray. Uh, just seconds before we went on air, the following statement was released. To fans, cast and crew, and everything in between, a very smeggy 35th birthday. Fingers crossed for more. Much love, Rob and Doug. Well, I will repeat that. <laughs> Much love, Rob and Doug. <laughs> what? <laughs> has, there, what? Has, there, has there been more said in a sing, in a simple sign off than than that? <laughs> it, within five words. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the last time they uh, released something that they'd co-written was uh, <laughs> 1993. <laughs> no, no, 2007. Come on now. Oh, buddy snatcher. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. So the last we heard in. 2021, early 2021, uh, just over two years ago, was that the company was basically at war with itself, um, that Doug Naylor was no longer a director of Grant Naylor Productions and had in fact initiated legal proceedings against Grant Naylor Productions. Obviously, we are fucking live on the internet and we're not going to start speculating about any legal matters whatsoever, no. but... The the headline is that we hadn't heard any updates whatsoever for two years. As far as we knew, everything was still in limbo. Mm -hmm. Everything was jammed up by this bloody legal problem. And all of a sudden, we have a statement that is signed by both Rob and Doug. And it is obviously a, uh, a very simple statement it, the statement in itself doesn't contain anything mind-blowing but just the fact that it has been signed by the pair of them is completely unexpected yeah yeah because it very much goes without saying that two years ago or indeed any point since two years ago up to this point that the, the, no one was in any state to fucking do any joint statements between the two like that that just wasn't yeah wasn't what was happening. The, the the idea that they could have agreed on even such a simple statement <laughs> to, to both put their names to it. Are we, are we to assume that due to the lack of sci-fi content within the statement that this is more of a Doug episode? Or <laughs> maybe Rob was doing the typing you know, Doug was what around <laughs> it's, the, it's the long awaited sequel, <clears throat> sequel to Into the Gloop. <laughs> it's one of the... Um, yeah. Benjamin R. has just pointed out that they've both just tweeted the message on their separate accounts on Twitter. Uh, this could be amazing for all of us. Uh, PDT says, that's Rob Schneider and Doug Jones, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Buzz Bummer says, Rob has returned Doug's lawnmower and all is right now. <laughs> Imagine if that's what it was about. <laughs> It'll all come uh, Capsi, you are too quiet. Yes, yes, I have seen the message from the Good. Benefactor. I'll sort <laughs> I will figure out what the fuck. Speak up! I will make yeah. myself too loud. Now. I mean, I mean, to do... When it comes to, like, New Red Dwarf and stuff, did anyone... And it, this sounds slightly pessimistic, but did anyone else kind of sort of write off the idea of being any New Red Dwarf now? Because... Of, 100%. Yeah, like it, it always felt like after the promised land, it was which was a nice, you know, a nice bow to be tied up. But just it always felt like 
once it was done, it was like, ah, that's probably going to be the last Red Dwarf we get now, then, if there's if they're, they're arguing over things. Like, it's now just about what they've already got and what they're going to do with it, rather than actually about the future of the show. And I was like, now I feel slightly more optimistic, but I'd already kind of, re- I'd already kind of got it. And I was like, yeah, I'm kind of, re- I'm kind of, I'm 35 years, it's a good, good innings, it'll do. And it's like, now it's more of like, okay, fine, let's, let's see what they do then. Come Let's see what they've got. Yeah, I was all prepared for a conversation tonight about how it's a huge shame <laughs> that we've got to, that we're still in this situation because, like, let's face it, nobody in the cast or crew is getting any younger, and so exactly it just it felt like two years where Red Dwarf could have been made had been completely wasted, and like. With no end in sight to the legal kerfuffle, the the odds of it getting back in time for people to actually do it was, <laughs> was but you know we don't want to get ahead of ourselves because all we have is the, literally this just one statement, but it's just the fact that it's a an impasse, a it, uh, or the opposite of an impasse, right? It's, it, 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 it's just it, yeah, the, the, just just get the the unpleasantness is obviously. At least partly behind us now. Um, oh, there's yeah. Doug and Rob have both tweeted. I haven't haven't read it fully yet. Um, but yeah, on the point of just more red dwarfs, like it's hard to f- remember really how much has happened since the Promised Land. <laughs> A lot has happened yeah. since the Promised Land, and so it's easy to forget that 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 show or, like came close to like well, it made Robert really ill. Like, yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm pretty sure that's not the first time the 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 ardours of wearing the suit has done that. And so at that point, I was already thinking like, it's not it's not it's it's not worth it for the health of these mm. these old lads, you know, to 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 keep pushing on if that's you know if it's mm-hmm. going to be a problem. But I mean, who the hell knows? Who the hell knows what sort of like? Well, yeah, I was come up with, with for Robert, you know. <laughs> well, my thoughts were always like. If they get it sorted today, if a, a flick is switched that says Red Dwarf can now be made again, how many more have they got in them realistically? Yeah. But but clearly the fact that this uh, statement has happened uh, today on the date of the anniversary, clearly planned to go out that way, uh, indicates that, yeah, things might well be happening behind the scenes. Things might already be being put into place. Yeah. I um, noticed that Danny... Danny John John blah, John Jules tweeted okay, earlier. I mean, he's um, he's, he tweets a lot of things, Danny John Jules. But he tweeted today a video of him with a, p- a person dressed as Bugs Bunny at a convention, and um, <laughs> with the caption, "That's not all, folks," which made me think because, like, once I knew that this thing was, you know, this statement was coming out because we were given it under embargo. Once I knew it was coming out, that clicked as like, ah, Danny knows something about this then, possibly. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. In fact, I'm actually amazed that there is a piece of breaking news that hasn't been leaked by either Danny or Robert. Uh, yeah. Samuel H. Diamond says it's a co-authored sequel to both Last Human and Backwards. <laughs> uh, what the Stephen Abu- oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Stephen Abutman says book. we'll have AA adverts coming out of our buttskis. <laughs> well, the AA adverts the last time they worked together. There, there we go. Kind yeah. of, yeah. I think like they, they weren't written I mean, by either. Of them, right? the spark, but yeah. <laughs> no, Rob, but Rob turned up on set and got us all briefly very excited. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, but you know. We'll probably get to it in Waffleman because it's the kind of thing that's usually talked about in Waffleman. But yeah, who knows what avenues this might open up to uh, to new Red Dwarf happening in whatever form it takes, whether it's mm. more episodes in the current setup, more specials, or completely new things from Rob's Butsky or Doug's Butsky. Or do they now have a joint Butsky? Yeah, it's a bit like that Paul Grant picture where like they've got both their heads on a body. It's like, it's Except both their arses just, are like ready to it's go. It's just four arses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay. That's quite a thing. And to say, yeah, I mean, to say, you know, I'll, yeah. We thought Grand Nailer Productions wasn't going to do anything for the 35th anniversary. In fact, this might be the first time they've done anything for an anniversary since the 10th. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, their their last, you know, fingers crossed is all we can say as well. It's just like, you know, like, yeah. well, let's just see what happens. But I mean, it's 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 definitely news in the right direction. 
which is encouraging. Mm. Yeah. There is red dwarf, being a red dwarf fan is much less depressing uh, since nine pm <laughs> today in the last ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has kind of uh, overshadowed what was supposed to be the biggest thing to happen today. Fucking months, <laughs> weeks of voting, a uh, whole new voting system designed, a whole new website built, eighteen thousand words of analysis for the Coral Campus. Which is what we were planning to discuss first uh, today. Um, we will undoubtedly come back to the breaking news later on. Uh, but for now, shall we discuss the Coral Canvas, my friends? I think we very much should. Let me uh, just... Um, I've, got some, I've got some technology here. I'll just... We'll hold that. Wait, oh, look, there's... Oh, oh sh- hang on. Uh, that's supposed to be the on. Coral Canvas. No, I'm, I'm changing it. I'm changing it. Hang on. Jesus Fuck. Christ. Fuck, fuck. Right, there uh, we go. Okay. It's all fine. The yeah. Coral Canvas. Excellent. Brought to you by Ganymede and Titan. <laughs> so, so, yeah. What, uh, what a set of results. Yeah. Uh, we had more people taking part than ever before. Uh, more than double the amount last time around in the Pearl Poll. And actually, when you look at the the difference between the, the scores given by the the GNT regulars and the uh oh hold on a minute <laughs> I interrupt this to bring some breaking news uh, oh, apparently TOS has actually been updated <laughs> what the fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> just a static <laughs> image saying that message with much love from Rob and Doug and a picture from the Radio Times in um oh, yeah. <laughs> he's going in I'm going in, I'm going in hot. Oh, lovely. That's very nice. Oh, that's great. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah, nice. no link, no link. With the, the yeah. new tab has never been new... more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Over an image of something from 1988. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel John that's question mark. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's great. That's great. I'm going to have to update lovely. my archive that I'm you know, keeping. <laughs> okay, yeah, anyway. Coral Canvas, yeah. Um, the, the, the range of people that we uh, that we got taking part has meant that we've got a really strong idea of what the consensus is, like outside of just G and T regulars. Um, yeah. A lot of whom are thoroughly pissed off with some of the results, <laughs> which, which is, yeah, well, is that's fine. The thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all part of the game. Yeah. Um, thanks for the memory getting absolutely mullered down <laughs> out of the top ten. Uh, poor thanks for the memory. I feel like it's been on a journey, right? Like there was the evangelization um, period of time, um, mainly coming from from Seb, you know, late late noughties. Um, and the, he certainly like sold it to me more than I'd kind of previously thought about it. And then and then it's just kind of since then, it's like, I don't know. I think it's the like we, we'll, we'll mention <laughs> a passing the normie effect if in an affectionate way <laughs> quite a lot during this yeah in an affectionate way <laughs> in that we do have we do have two like very much two camps of of voters in here you, we've got not necessarily the g and t viewers because not every hardcore red dwarf fan is a g and t reader obviously but you have got the, the people that have maybe watched the show a lot and discussed it a lot and therefore has start, started to extract some more meaning and more value out of episodes you wouldn't normally do. And then you've got the more casual casual fans that kind of, the, the headlines more stay in their, in their front and centre mm. in their minds. And well, we'll get to it, but like Series 6 had a barnstorming canvas and Series 8, did really well as well and series eight is it is the mainstream it is a mainstream favorite it always has been mm-hmm. yeah i mean yeah you say it did very well it's all relative yeah well yeah yeah it is it's, it's still did very very badly indeed but it it improved slightly since the last time right yes well, it's, yeah. a lot of, it's a lot of people's jumping on point for red dwarf which is probably why it's sort of fared better in the sort of the younger fans so to speak you know, like yeah. the—I mean, like fans of the show haven't been fans for as long as people who are older yeah, that have I'm, been. I'm fascinated by those, like because you know, you, you, we already see situations where people whose first experience of series one and two was remastered, 
and there's just no getting away from it. If that is your first experience, you're going to have a soft spot for it. It doesn't matter. Mm. It doesn't matter about anything else, really. You're going to have yep. that. You can't get rid of that. So, like that, that initial nostalgia factor is really interesting to me because um, you just don't really like. It's, it's a random element almost, isn't it? Uh, I'd just like to point out that we're aware that Capsule is only coming out of uh, what now one year old. <laughs> <laughs> Caps is only on the left audio channel, apparently. Oh dear! Deal with it. Okay, really okay microphone. It. Switch to mono. It's not <laughs> um, you are in mono, just in the left ear. Uh, switch to dual <laughs> mono. Not necessarily in the right ear, all. Okay. Um... Um, but yeah, there's some big headlines, some big changes from the all previous polls. Uh, in that we have a new worst ever episode. I would say, I would say, who'd have thought it? But um, it was it was in it was in bottom place from day one. <laughs> like <laughs> within the first few votes coming in, it was at the bottom. I was worried at one stage that uh, Pete Part Two might dip below, but no, safely, safely, comfortably, one would say, comfortably, comfortably. the worst episode of Red Dwarf. Comfortably shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never, I never thought that the Dave era would dip below uh, P Part Two. No, but it, but it did. Yeah, just it once. Did. I yeah. mean, I, I knew from the moment that Time Wave went out, but before then, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the last poll, in the poll poll, it didn't do. I mean, it was like fourth bottom or something, I think, which comparatively is not terrible. Yeah. Um, but then it was uh, benefiting from the bump that uh, new entries get. Uh, every poll, things that are new, the newest things, especially in uh, Series 12's case, was only it only went out a couple of months before, or weeks even before we opened the vote. Yeah. Um, so because it was fresh in people's minds and it was new and exciting, it did better. But uh So it's less it's less second poll syndrome and more the after effects of first poll syndrome. It just takes yeah. five years to manifest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's always been the way, like the series yeah. ten episodes dropped um for the poll poll, which was the second time that they'd been polled. And uh yeah, series eleven and twelve both dropped massively on average the worst affected episode the biggest drop of the entire thing was uh mcore mm. yeah down eight places which you'd have thought would be one of the better rated episodes of the whole of the day era you'd think so but then i guess we're basing that off kind of community reaction um mm. at the time and community reaction around gnt and you know but then again, I can't really see why, you know, a more mainstream audience would would dislike it particularly. I actually don't know off the top of my head how it fared on GNT users versus non. But I'm guessing it did better with 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 our, with us with our people. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to check that. But um, yeah, it's really weird. I I think I think uh, eleven and twelve have bit had some unfair um i don't think they're in there well they're certainly not in the positions i would want them to be in i think they're a bit low but mm. i'm far more concerned <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to poor performances or the terrible things that have happened to series one in the last five years apparently yeah um because that's um that's upsetting to say the least they um, got a real kicking and Two episodes. Waiting, waiting for that drops down to number fifty-two. Fifty-two, which is ridiculous. Still in the BBC bubble, but I mean, for how long? For how long? Depends if there's any more <laughs> new entries in five years' time. Oh, she, yeah, well, <laughs> it looks more likely now than it did a few hours ago. The the idiot that wrote the results <laughs> article seemed to not have no idea that there was going to maybe be more <laughs> yeah. Out of date within seconds. I literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to maintain a positive tone and be like, well, you know, Red Dwarf is dead, let's face it, but <laughs> we've had a lovely time. <laughs> Everything's fine. 
I should I should be I should be equally coming into both of your ears now, everyone. So if you could please let, let me know. I've modeled myself. Yeah. I can I can see you coming through in at least uh, excellent. I, I thought I turned that particular webcam off, so um let me just <laughs> he'll, get, he'll get us kicked off YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Join our only fans page. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I else? should be. I should probably be scrolling, shouldn't I? I've yeah. not been scrolling. Give us all a this stimulus. Time. So let's, um, you know, let's 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 make let's read every, every single word. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> so there's yes. not some P's at the bottom because it always does not in its in its in its right. I was going to say time time waves at the bottom, but like spiritually, we all know what the worst. Of the it's worst weird because it's right? like if you if you just sort of draw a graph of actually sort of the worst, like P part two is is. You know, on the scale of one to a hundred, well, let's just say, this, yeah, scale of one to a hundred, P, P part two is about. If only we knew it's out of a scale of one to ten. Look, look, <laughs> look, look. In my brain, P part two, even though it is the worst Red Dwarf episode, it, like in, in terms of like time wave, is much bigger drop away mm, from mm-hmm. from the lowest. But it's, it's such a the, it's such a fuck up. The sustained shitness of 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 eight really, it, it really does like. It's like on House of Games when someone comes second in every single episode and you, you they're not really on your radar, but then they end up winning the whole thing because, you know, they've managed to win the last one. A is where, like, you just... I don't know. It's the reverse of that. I haven't thought about <laughs> it any further than that. Um, <laughs> just, just being Series just 8 makes it worse. The consistency, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the cumulative effect of watching a series eight. By the time you've got to Pete Part Two, you're just like, I've got no time for this shit anymore. Yeah, it's too many episodes, <laughs> and that is probably problem number one, right? That is the root of all of a lot of the issues. Yeah. Is this just too and many that many barely episodes. any of them ended up going to plan. Yeah, but I personally, I rate Time Wave and Crazy TV as my two worst episodes because no matter how bad Pete Part Two is, and it is very bad. I can't, I can't put it on the same level as something that actually offends me. Like mm-hmm. the problem, with, like Pete Part Two also has some dodgy bits. Now I think about it, to do with Crichton's penis, but um, it's still just like an overriding problem throughout the series is Crichton's penis. Yeah, but um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I can't be as mad at an episode for just being a bit shit mm. or a lot shit compared to. Both Crichty TV and Time Wave have concepts in them that I actually find offensive, so they are worse. It's interesting. Genuel says the average score is still around five for these is insane. I think it's worth mentioning kind of the we, we, we built this to account for the relative scores being all over the place with this. So, like, some people might go from one to ten. I went from one worst, ten the best, and I had clumps, you know. Either you know, I had multiple tens, multiple ones, but some mm. people might have, let's say, had five as being the baseline because you know, we did say vote like vote for everything relative to Red Dwarf, but that doesn't yeah. mean people would actually do that. I mean, some people try to submit um, uh, uh, rankings with my email address, so you know, people don't follow instructions, <laughs> <laughs> but. The way it works is is that no matter what you're voting for, everything you know it, it all comes out in the wash. Basically, everything kind of um, still gets placed correctly because the person voting is still you know. So so I think the fact that these are all fives, this is that's coming from kind of a lot of people just not really maybe being able to come like want to score anything lower than five or four. Um, Ian has just left the chat he'll be back in a minute he has crashing issues um and um now we're all in different places hey i'm the fucking host now <laughs> welcome to the capsi canvas i'm in the wrong server now oh hello i'm jimmy now <laughs> oh, yeah no. i meant to mention that there's i've been <laughs> the... There's a chance that I will just randomly disappear for five seconds at a time and come back with no face. But, Something um... about Mickey Mouse and operations. <laughs> for some reason, my Discord just every now and then will restart itself. Uh, 
it only takes a few seconds to get back, but there we go. Um, I'm wondering whether it's going to do it while I'm in the middle of reading out a question during Closhbusters, <laughs> possibly during the the That's... 90 second timer for the gold run. But I, I, I we'll have see. a pause timer button. It's fine. It's all good. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but basically, what I'm saying is, I think yeah, the reason you know, I, I think a lot of people like five was their floor, four was their floor because they just love Red Dwarf, and oh. there's lots of people that just say, I love every episode. It doesn't matter. Which is, you know, which is a, it's an opinion that people have, and in that respect, it's valid. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it's an opinion that exists. It's an opinion that exists. Um, we need to talk about the the dichotomy, the 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 interface between shit back episodes and good back episodes. There's definitely <laughs> more shit back episodes. <laughs> But the but the very unshittest is uh, is also a back episode. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. We've got the the, le- the least the least shit episode of all is a back episode, and and the, a big chunk of the shittest are also backs. Like Doug does like his back, his back titles because five in a row. If, if we get back, oh, oh no, it's out of the red, isn't it? The proposed. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, real life. Well, who knows what the status of that is? <laughs> of any of the. The ideas that Doug posited at Dimension Jump in twenty twenty one. Bob's um, been very, very clear about his um his Butsky policy. Um he wants things <laughs> flying out of it, which means you need as many things to load into that Butsky as possible. So why not? But ski, but, but uh <laughs> some of Doug's ideas seemed to be what can I do if I can't do Red Dwarf? Yes, in hindsight. Is how I interpreted them in terms of, like, if this legal proceeding goes on and I can't make Red Dwarf, then what can I do that involves the cast uh, or otherwise that is not Red Dwarf but I can do? Whether he would want to do any of those things if he can now make Red Dwarf again, which we don't know if that is the case, but if things are looking more likely that you can make Red Dwarf again. Um but, but we, yeah, I guess we also have to think is that what is it that they could be doing that, let's say, if Robert has limited capacity to have the mask on, let's say, in a day or something like that, like what, what would, you know, would the next special be DNA 2? Like that would be a pretty cool idea. Like <laughs> give him give him a, a story reason that would be fun and that's still Red Dwarfy that, that he doesn't have to do that or have, you know, out of the red where they're all just going to be themselves anyway. It's... um. Possibilities are endless, aren't they? AI head. What? AI. <laughs> AI <laughs> <head. you. laughs> hey, I head. <laughs> they could. They could produce. Um, I mean, Grand Isle Productions have already produced one Robert Llewellyn um, uh, production. Uh, um, I Cam Corder. They could produce mm-hmm. IT two I two two, and uh, <laughs> and Robert can be out of a mask for that one as well. He could just, yeah, he could have the motion capture dots on his face and they could do the yeah, mask and pose. CGI thing. Easy. Option. Cheap. I hope, I hope Cheap. Rob and our Doug uh, are watching and taking notes here. Because we got, yeah, we got this is how you loads. make telly. Go We've on, got man. loads more of these. <laughs> Look, we, are, we are proving right now, this second, that we can produce competent broadcast oh. television. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Genuall says, I like Danny's animated hair. Oh, I have got my fan on, so yeah. <laughs> it's wavering in the wind. Very nice. Uh, so right, Coral Canvas, what are we talking about? <sighs> back to Earth. Yeah, someone else said in the comments, let me just scroll back and find the fucker. Uh, someone said... <laughs> Ross Baker, I've never heard a good thing about Back to Earth outside of G&T. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, we, it's not as in the, yeah. <laughs> the three of us, like it more than most people, even fellow G&T regulars. Yeah. Although it was not, um, none of the Back to Earth episodes appeared in the bottom ten of G&T regulars. Um, but the normies put them way yeah. lower. I think there's there's context here, isn't there? I think I mean, by no means the GNT at the time was not in harmony about this. It's more no. in harmony now <laughs> about it. Because uh, we got rid of the Deadwood. <laughs> but I think Back to Earth meant something 
a little bit more maybe to to the very online fan. Um, yeah, I I, th- I think the fact that it wasn't like egregious, it was it was good fun. It was like you know, it oh, was, Mickey Love. Like we just watched um, that doctor that for Gareth Roberts Doctor Who special. I mean, we've said this <laughs> millions of times on Dwarfcast before, but that and and that was just like. That that was awful I, I, on a number of levels. Whereas back to Earth, you know, it was nice, warm, familiar feeling for part one, despite the fact that it wasn't in the least bit funny. Um, a good guest character. Part two was a head fuck and had some really good, like, really good meta stuff in there. Good guest performances. And three was <laughs> the Blade Runner stuff. I'm never going to get on board with. Um, I've gone back and forth in it, but like, just no. Red Dwarf is not Blade Runner inspired thing to me like that's just not that's not what i had been trained to think before then but again great guest performance um with the creator and a really nice really nice dramatic ending a nice performance like there's you could pick out loads and loads and loads of individual really good bits from back to earth and i think they get completely lost in the kind of the overall feeling of like oh it was just crap and it looked crap and Mm. you know it's not helped by the fact that it's kind of disappeared off everywhere. Like yeah, you can't cool. even watch it if you want to. Like unless you've got it on DVD or Blu-ray, you don't have it because it's not on demand. It's not it doesn't exist anywhere. Yeah. So even if you wanted to watch it, you can't. We it's as well. I think we or someone hit up UK TV Play on Twitter. They're very chatty them lot, <laughs> and yeah. um, they said it's simply down to a rights issue. They, they just don't have the rights to show it. So. I'd be curious as to why that isn't the case, because it could be as simple as we don't really want to show this. Bob and Doug have previous when it comes to blocking the repeats of <laughs> their series. It goes all the way back. Um, oh, if it had been on demand back in 1988, series one would not have been available. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, But I, I do also, and this is like 100% speculation, Back to Earth had a load of free work done on it hmm. by actual companies, actual people that that might just you know there's a reason not the nine o'clock news isn't all on dvd and that's because hundreds of people wrote for it like you just can't keep track you know and so you just don't bother oh okay that's 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 my that's one of my theories (laughs) my best guess is much more um boring tedious than that which is that (laughs) they had a contract to give them the the rights to uh to stream it until a certain date, a certain arbitrary date, and it hasn't been re-signed either because they've forgotten, it's not a priority for them, it wouldn't be profitable for them to put it back on because it's not as popular as the rest, or it's fallen down the gap in this legal cover for which has stopped Granada Productions from doing anything for the last two Very years. Possible. Yeah. Very possible. Um, that is, that, yeah. yeah, that does. It, it's interesting nonetheless, though, it, like, it does exist outside of Red Dwarf in a lot of ways, does Back to Earth. The only reason that we really like count it is because Doug just decided to call Series 10 Series 10. Like He could have very easily called that Series 9 and Back to Earth maybe would have disappeared even more. Like Who knows? It's, it's, it's weird how the, the gap in the numbering almost gives it a <laughs> position. And, and yes, it is Series 9. Um mm. Well, I wonder whether, like, psychologically, it might have been even more forgotten if, if yeah, if series ten was nine, <laughs> and so on and so forth. But I'll just mention one of the uh, Nathan has just said Back to Earth is available to stream on Stan in Australia. Is Stan the Australian equivalent of Dave? Oh, you can prove anything with <laughs> facts, can't you? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Australia still have Back to Earth. So yeah, oh. okay, oh. fair enough. Maybe it's a Mike Seymour thing. Australia Mike Seymour personally bought the right <laughs> in Australia. That is his streaming service. I will only allow my free special effects to be shown on Australian <laughs> streaming services. That's really interesting. So maybe they're just, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, look, look, there's another streaming issue. We're not streaming. This is more broadcast, but like, this your nose. UK TV is still showing Marooned Remastered. And to the point that we got through to. What was what was her position again at UK TV? She was very high up. 
There was Zoe. Zoe. T- uh, Zoe, whose name I can't remember. She was in the PR department. Oh, okay. Right. PR department. But yeah. it, it, it went up the ladder as we were bugging the Twitter accounts. And it changed. It changed over to the original Marooned. And it was like, oh, you know, great. We've made a tiny little change. Because it was the only episode that they that you could TV repeat that is the remastered version. And then a couple of years later, it just reverted back to type. It's almost like there's... like. Like there's some sort of inertia or something like just, you know, like there's no particular reason why that is happening. It's just happening because of something weird with a system somewhere. And so, yeah, I guess guess maybe no one's really even thought like Back to Earth is, you know, particularly. Do we think that um, the the remastered episode of Marooned um, being aired frequently on UK TV is the reason why Marooned has dropped so dramatically down the table? Oh my god! It all falls into place. <laughs> it's really, it's, it, what's really funny as well is if if you watch um, Marooned off the uh, like Sky Q or you download it off the uh, UK TV Play off their servers, it's the one that's on the DVD with the little star bug in little Easter egg at the end. Plays that for like ten seconds. It's just really weird if you don't know what that's there for. <laughs> I love, I love, I love that as a, like an extra wrinkle to this story. It's like. Because it's um, still there. So <laughs> what that tells me is that the versions you're watching on streaming are presumably from the DVDs, right? Or, like, or maybe there's masters like the, the master There'll be a master tape, tape, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But weirdly, that version of Marooned with the little Starbucks shot at the end isn't on the Series 1 2 H Blu ray, which is there. All oh, right. Um, I thought that would have been because that's the one they did to reclassify, right? Yeah, yeah, back in yeah. and that's a fifteen, and it doesn't fucking need to be. Yeah. Well done, everyone. I mean, we could we we could go on and on, couldn't we? Yeah. And have at and have in probably the previous podcast. So we'll move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, yeah. Let's let's pick out some key headlines. Basically, series eleven and twelve dropped. Yep. Uh, but the one new entry was the Promised Land, and that did rather well. Did very well. uh, it landed up at number 32. A number 32. It's oh, pie chart. bubble with great abandon. Oh, sorry, yes, I've just, I've just went, went right past the pie chart. Yeah, this is the top 36. Look Scroll at this. Down. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at the other screen. Look at this heinous bullshit. It's claret and blue. Well, it is. But <laughs> series six should be. I mean, yeah, it's never it's never happened anyway, has it? There's always been a bubble penetration as long as we've been doing these. There so is. It's always, um, has it always been the, from the newest series, though. Mm. Uh, I thought that was yeah. the new. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was it was always. No, uh, Sk- Skipper ended up in the bubble last time. Um, it might have been the only new one to end up in the bubble. Um, but yeah. Beginning and possibly lemons as well, uh, from memory. But yeah, Promised Land straight in, almost the top Dave episode, but just behind um, Skipper, the Skipper. aforementioned Skipper. Uh, yeah. But yeah, for for a new entry, very respectable performance. Um, Genuel says in the chat, uh, Promised Land is good, but it may have benefited from both recency bias and the it's the last thing we'll ever get flavor. Yeah. Very, very possibly. Yep. Um, and I did say in the write up, I did say in the write up that if it is the last ever episode, that it kind of works as such to end on one big, uh, really big feature length special that tells a, a story that the show has been waiting to tell for thirty odd years. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I imagine that's always going to be the case. Really, is that like Doug now has written the potential last ever episode not including only the good like three times at the beginning is a perfectly comfortable last episode as is um as is skipper as is promised Mm. um so it's nice that he has that opportunity and he keeps doing that for safety you know not not never again shall we have an only the good or an out out of time um Mm. cliffhanger yeah Yeah. his fingers have been burnt there yeah um Alternatively, Flappo Jacko asks, uh, I wonder if recency bias is less potent after a two and a half year gap compared with the very small gap between series 12 and the Pearl Pole. 
think the goodwill towards the promised land does seem to have um maintained. maintained. Yeah. Possibly due to the fact that it's yeah, it's the last thing that we've got with no news of anything else, you know. Yeah. They're appreciating it for what it's got. But also you have to remember that the last two and a half years for some people feels like five minutes and for some people seems like twenty years mm-hmm. because all sense of time and sense space and continuity has gone out the fucking window. Yeah, and it Well who was who would uh... Who told me that Promised Land was three years ago? And I still don't really believe that that's true. Yeah, it it doesn't feel in, in two in two months' time. It's three years old. That's just mm. crazy. I just and I, in, I in three months in three months' time, my daughter is three years old, and that's how <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, time flies. Red, Red Dwarf just cannot have a sensible period of time in between series unless they're filmed back to back. Yeah, it's just that's the only way to happen. do it. Yeah, it's not that. I was, show. I was, we were gently speculating the other day, weren't we, that if everything was suddenly fine and Red Dwarf went into production again, that the smartest thing to do is keep doing feature length specials because we all agree that the promised land and you know the performance of the promised land in the Coral Canvas would suggest yeah. that uh, it's a good format for the show, but shoot back to back, like multiple specials at a time. You can yeah. fire out like two or three ninety-minute specials in the amount of time it would take to make a full series. Yeah, yeah. Shoot them all, release them over the course of however much time. That's Get them in the can one while and you a can. Half series worth of material, but in three kind of distinct episodes, so it's it's more it's more efficient. Everyone's energies are kind of being put to yeah. Better. But also that I th- I think they should be standalone ninety minute specials as well, not like shoot a trilogy, uh, you know, mm. because yeah, we the the, we the survey shows us quite clearly what happens with multi part stories in Red Dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> I one of my favorite lines of yours in this article is um, uh, back to Earth uh, being the only multi part story that was <laughs> supposed to be a multi part story. <laughs> That's not what I said at all. Cassie. Oh, was it not back to earth? It's not back to earth. It was that the promised land is the only time that they oh, tried yes. to make a feature length episode and actually ended up with a feature length yeah. episode. So, yeah, the opposite of uh, what I just said. <laughs> that is the truth. And speaking of the promised land, there it is. There it is indeed. New entry, very respectable, 7.3. Bang, at, back, bang in the middle, really, isn't it? It's like. Well, there's a table at the end that shows where it places in terms of. Compared to the series average scores, and it is above series one. Obviously, it's not a direct comparison. It's not quite. Yeah, it's a bit weird. Apples yeah. to apples. Well, you know, yeah, it scans. It certainly makes sense given the the individual placings. Um. So yeah, on average, the Promised Land is better than the series that contains Future Echoes and Me Squared. I'll just mention the, the comments. Phil Paget has just said what you're suggesting here is James Cameron's Avatar sequels model. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is essentially what we're telling him to do. Uh, just like, make all of the films in then... advance and then slowly <laughs> release them as you go. Um yeah, give 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 Rob and Doug that sort of budget and see what happens. <laughs> you know what? You I've been a fan of Red Dwarf for the majority of my life. I've been running Ganymede and Titan for the majority of my life. There's always things you can learn. Salome Cat says in the comments Aleo, Aleo, welcome to the show. I have just realized, seeing it written down, that what Rimmer says as the sensational reverse brothers at the start of their show is hello backwards. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you learn you something learn new every day. day. <laughs> Bloody hell. This is like when... Yes, I, know I, knew, I knew this was coming. I knew this was going to come. It was both of us, Capsy. It wasn't just you. It was oh, me as well. I thought we Suddenly realised... No. <laughs> or the time that you dropped your chips on the floor. No, this is... I was going to say... <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was going to say when we suddenly realised that Camille was called Camille because she's a chameleon. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then I and then I said I'd only recently realised that Harley Quinn was called Harley Quinn because she's a Harlequin. Yeah, um, well, that's that's that just was going a little bit too far, maybe. But you know, yeah. you know, the reason Batman's a thing is because he's a Batman. Oh no, don't be ridiculous. That's clearly not the case. 
Oh, it's man. because he batters think, men. So do you think you were doing like a sort of like a sort of like a, um, a vaudeville sort of hello, hello? Yes, that's hello. what I was thinking. So like a vaudeville nonsense kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you see. know what? I think I think I'd kind of filed that away in a similar place. To be honest. Hello, hello. I, I, I thank you. 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 That sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. but it's backwards, so obviously it wasn't going to be that. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, by the way, when you're reading the article, um, the screenshots that you're getting for each one is is randomised from the Smeg Drive. So, if you fancy, like, <laughs> there was some conclusion this morning. <laughs> a lot of people said that when they first went on there, well, why have they picked that picture? That's an awful picture. <laughs> They're just fucking lazy. <laughs> Someone said, "Is it uh, Wickham? C. Wickham? Oh, I always want to call Connor Wickham because that's a footballer, but his name is Christopher Wickham." Um, said, uh, did you literally just hit random and, on the Smega Drive and get, and get the first one that <laughs> yes. came up? I said, no, you did, effectively. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it, it does, it does. I think the Time Wave one at one point gave us the uh, that one cue that Howard Goodall uses. All the time, <laughs> yeah. Danny's sarcastic. Uh, sarcastic. So <laughs> uh, yeah. But the Smega Drive is, yeah. If you have, if you don't know what the Smega Drive is, by the way, the Smega Drive is basically a um, yeah. a generated uh, Red Dwarf meme machine. Um, uh, <laughs> Red basically. Dwarf meme machine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 basically a repository of every Red Dwarf screenshot from every episode, apart from the specials. But yeah. you know, watch this space, that might future future. But yeah. Uh, Frinkiak, yeah. Frinkiak for Red Dwarf. Yeah. But better. Chewing on Frink- the eyes. <laughs> oh, I got these crisps. Um, we've been live for nearly 50 minutes, and when we were, um, I mean, admittedly, we did have that massive bloody news yeah, to, true, to fit yeah. in. But let's uh, let's skip to the more interesting end of the table. Yeah. Uh, quick sidebar to note yeah, as we've said, Series 1 did really badly, dropping way down. Uh, thanks for the memory, drops out of the top 10. Big shame. Uh, no longer even the second best episode of the series because Better Than Life overtook it. <laughs> the Inquisitor enters the top ten for the first time. Uh, and this bit is fairly expected, but it's when we get to the top four that things really get interesting because the top four has been identical for the previous two polls. Uh, same episode, same order. Uh, all four of them didn't move uh, last time around, but now... It's the same four episodes, but in a different order. You can see, if you look at the average scores uh, between Marooned in fourth and Queeg in fifth, that there is a, a big jump in average score. So it's like these four are the elite hmm. uh, of Red Dwarf. They're like the old um, <laughs> yeah, top four eight, in the Premier League. <laughs> 8.5 8. to 8.8, 8, yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, it, that's 0.3, but in the scheme of things, when you look at the gaps fair, elsewhere. Fair yeah, Marooned, absolute shocker that Marooned, comfortably second best episode for, for a long time, but uh, down in fourth, drop I of two places. I should say as well that Marooned was also comfortably the second place episode for most of the voting in this. Um, it was one of those things that towards the end it kind of tanked, right? Didn't it? It was like to, it reached, just reached a kind of tipping point. Um, I'm sure it was well, second for a long time. Gun, Gunman was always. I was always up there. Yeah. There was there was a, a little third. separation. Yeah. There was back to reality in Gunman, and then there was uh, Marooned and Quarantine that kept swooping, swoop swooping. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, Marooned has dropped two. Consequently, quarantine has gone up one. That's now at number three. And let me tell you, folks, for anyone that's not already read the article <laughs> where I say this, <laughs> um, that those that, that top two were clearly again a big gap. Uh, those top two were the only ones that average scores ended up over nine. Um, they were out ahead, and oh, you've just spoiled the reveal, Capsi. What? Uh, <laughs> I know, it's not properly revealed but yeah there was uh, Gunman and Back to Reality kept on swapping round in the early days of voting it did eventually settle down and turn into the result that we kind of expected it to but we were really really uh, <laughs> convinced <laughs> like excited that something could be happening here yeah yeah 
but something wasn't happening here. <laughs> no. No <laughs> one. <laughs> Second. But still, for Death. Gunman of the Apocalypse to to overtake Maroon so yep. emphatically is a big, big shift in there's, the last vote. There's the mainstream vote making itself felt, and probably yep. more so than any other item because people who identified as not GNT readers, the poor, poor souls, they had Gunman top of top overall. If we, if we right. just included them, Gunman was... And already, now that we're talking about it, I'm seeing people in the chat saying, nah, not, I never understood the love for Gunman. Gunman number two, not for me, Chef. It's <laughs> from Richard Potts, which I think he meant Chief, but we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not, not for me, Clive. <laughs> no thanks, Ted. <laughs> I've got these... Yeah, it's uh, it's fascinating, isn't it? It's like... it's It's caused me to think, is Series, is series 6 then a... A normie series is it? Is it you know more of a, a mention? And I guess it is because that's what they wanted it to be, right? So that's what they set out mm. to make. They wanted a sitcom series. They wanted high gag rates. And then Gunman is just such a famous episode. It possibly is more famous than Back to Reality in when you get out into the mainstream and you're not, you know, in the dirty corners of the internet that that we're in. Um, if you're showing if you're showing clips of Red Dwarf, say overseas, and you wanted to get an idea of how sort of wide spanning Red Dwarf would go, yeah. you wouldn't show clips of Back to Reality to demonstrate that. You'd use guns to demonstrate. Yeah, because yeah. Back to Reality yeah. is like high drama of like you know what what's going to happen to the characters that you love, and look how the characters you love have exactly. existed. Um, mm-hmm. Which didn't stop, didn't stop Ian loving it because it was his first ever episode. Well, I was going to say, I, <laughs> I can contradict literally everything that you've just said. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. In general, normal people we're talking about here. Do, you say that Series 6 is for normies and not the hardcore fans. I put Series 6 as my favourite series and I think I qualify yeah, as a hardcore fan. Um, well, I mean, yeah, but I partly think... maybe that was because I it was the first one I watched as it went out. Like I'd already seen Series 5 I'm on tape. Surprised. I'm surprised that you put 6. Yeah, that's interesting. It's it's what I alluded to in the in the write up when I planned a section in my head that the statistics didn't actually bear out, but I put it in anyway. Is that you'd be forgiven for thinking that you know the gap between people's what people say are their favourite series and what the stats say, they don't necessarily marry up no. because there's so many other things at stake. Um, not at yeah. stake. That's the wrong word. There's so many other factors to to take into account, yeah. such as you know the the sets, the lighting, the the mood, the tone, the type of episodes, the the specific combination of characters, the way those characters are played. You could prefer the feel of one series to all others, and yet concede that actually, you know, series five has got at least two ten out of tens <laughs> in it in quarantine and back to reality. Hollow Ship's brilliant, yeah. Inquisitor's brilliant, so I probably prefer the episodes more on average of Series 5, but I would still call Series 6 my favourite series. I think that's exactly how I kind of gauge it as well. It feels like, yeah, Series 5 is the one I have more love for. It's like the one that I kind of think of most fondly as being a really good series is Series 6. There's a difference between best and favourite, basically. Yeah, definitely. Mm, definitely. For sure, yeah. Um, like, um, Hot Fuzz is the best Cornetto film. Sean is my favourite. That's the... Uh, version that and we can all agree favorite. that the world's end is neither the best or anyone's, <laughs> no, favorite. anyone's favorite but it's fine um yeah um red red dwarf nerd said sorry i i think i supplied some of the casual voters um <laughs> say yeah he um red, red dwarf nerd dan he plugged plugged the the um the poll on his youtube channel and that certainly did provide uh a lovely little influx because uh, as much as we are you know like i say we're affectionately saying normies and what whatnot but we're acknowledging that there are roughly kind of two two strands of red dwarf fan and we wanted as many from both sides as possible we just wanted numbers as many red dwarf fans yeah. as we could possibly get and i really feel like you know i mean we basically doubled the pearl poll and um yeah Mm-hmm. And yeah, so we're grateful for absolutely. That's what we wanted. Went to the, yeah, went to the effort with it because it's given us such brilliant numbers, really interesting things to think about. Yeah, really interesting result. Um, and by the way, in return, um, should we plug Red Dwarf Nerd, <laughs> the YouTube channel? We recommend it. It is good. Indeed. Uh, Dan, uh, always really well researched, always really well presented. Uh, interesting stuff that you talked about. Recommended. Yep. yep. Production quality way in advance of our own. 
<laughs> so who does? Hey, there, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let's look at some of these things. Yeah, these, and then these we'll are... move on to the big quiz. And I apologise to the clush busters who are currently waiting <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to bust their closhes. <laughs> they're, in the, the, they're in the green room, but thankfully we didn't supply them with any booze or indeed any refreshments, food or <laughs> oxygen. So I'm sure they'll be fine. We'll be there in a minute, lads. <laughs> uh, most 10 out of 10s most 1 out of 10s like this, this yeah is... yeah spin on spin on spin on spin on regulars here we go the regulars ah, there you go. yeah look normal people <laughs> the GT <laughs> regulars top 5 is identical to the poll poll top 5 yeah so basically our opinions haven't shifted at all in the last 5 years we are stubborn cunts and <laughs> no one has changed their mind about anything to do with the top five. Yeah, yeah apparently so. Completely new <laughs> voting system, which is even more remarkable. We've got a graph that will. Oh, we've got a graph. More remarkable. Oh, we've got a graph. Um, yeah. yeah, you may think things have changed. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Nothing has changed. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. I mean, look, look, look what we've got here. So, go, obviously, Gunrun at the top by a distance, like a whole. Whole like 1.5 decimal point is massive. Um, massive, it's it's ma it's fucking massive, and also polymorph again. Like, someone who say hasn't watched Red Dwarf in 10 years, but they know they love it, but they haven't watched it in 10 years. Those people, there's loads and loads of those people. In fact, I'm close to being one of those people myself because the only reason I watch it is for commentaries on this. But Polymorph, the, you're going to remember Polymorph. You're going to remember yep. the box shots. You're going to me remember the monster. You're going to give it 10. You're going to give it a high score. You know, so that's what, kind of more what I was thinking about. And also, you know, Le Legion and, and, and Gunman. And these are all episodes that, like, they're in there. Yeah, like, yeah, you remember the Dwayne Dibley and Ace Rimmer returning episode. You remember, you know, the cliffhanger. And so, though, you know, Series 6 is more of, a, more of a, a mainstream thing just because I think it gets its hooks into the popular culture just a little bit just a little bit more than the other series next um, graph next graph and we've got bottom but it's not very that's not very interesting to be honest is nah. that in fact it's yeah. all bollocks this <laughs> you shouldn't have <laughs> no, we, we, we should say that if anyone who's watching this at the unlikely event that anyone who's watching this doesn't know about g and t uh, head over to ganymede.tv <laughs> after the street scream and read this magnificent magnum magnificent octopus <laughs> that um, that we made once you once you're done as well go back to uh, september 2002 and read the whole archive and then, then, then <laughs> you call yourself a gnt regular <laughs> um so we've got total positions gained lost by each series so this is this is where series oh yeah eight... that's how yeah series a is the second highest gainer yeah but uh it's look still at shit. this look at this lad T plus 20 places between all of its episodes, it's actually <laughs> astonishing. The only the only series to have had each and every episode improve its placing. Yeah. Thanks, Stato. Whereas basically the day Vera suffered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It took it took all the hits and series one. Um yeah. Yeah, that's uh, showing how badly eleven and twelve did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, average points per series. So this is just making this is just keeping you all honest like we've got favorite series as you said in the extra details but also um average points that's according to the stats that's uh yeah the stats. series five still on top but series six leaping up the table yeah, nipping, nipping, last time. nobody nobody said that series eight was their favorite series <laughs> one person said back to earth if you're in chat shout up no. and you'll you'll win absolutely nothing Shut no one wins anything on this stream as the clock buster contestants will soon find out yes oh right here oh. we go line, oh, line. Line. Graph. lines and oh. lines lines and lines lines and lines this was we ripped this off i think from flapjack uh who has provided most of the best ganymede and titan content yeah. <laughs> the last the last year, few, so. yeah. um but yeah plotting the positions in episode order gives you a lovely overview of how red dwarf peaked and troughed over the years it's pretty clear, isn't it? It's pretty clear. Yeah. Like, look at the look at the mid series slumping one. 
<laughs> it got better. Slump? Is that mid season slump because of the because of the non repeat thing? Is that is that could that be reason why, or is it just the fact it's that just, it's, 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 it's run out of people's Yeah, minutes? it's series one syndrome. Um, I mean, waiting waiting for God and, and um, Balance of Power, they are the second and third filmed. Am I right yeah. in saying that? Right, yeah. so they are they represent the most consistently old material that series one has to offer because series one's basically series seven uh, episode seven with with some original stuff thrown in there um so balance of power is absolutely is 100 percent the oldest material they shot it's before they had any idea really like or they were finding yeah. their feet um which is like remarkable when you kind of think about the black card white card scene which for some reason was cut out of remastered and it's one of one of my favorite scenes of series yeah. one um and waiting for god is like incredibly impressive considering again the the early like the 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 amount that it's um digging into the the law of the show the law of the characters um in the third episode written recorded is yeah but basically that that middle section of series one which is balance of power waiting for god confidence and paranoia is very good. They are good episodes, but they are different from almost every Red Dwarf episode that followed. They're just they're 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 play out to a different formula, a different combination of things that made a Red Dwarf episode because they were still developing mm. their ideas and everything evolved and just got better and better as time went on. I've so it's that. not that they're bad episodes; it's just that they're different. So of course they're going to be outliers when you're comparing the whole of Red Dwarf. What they are is. Um, the original, their the, the ultimate underworld, and the original System Shock game. Now, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> They're both first-person games that were released either just before or just after Doom. And they represent a very different way of tackling the first-person genre. They're very, um, very mouse-heavy, very kind of UI-heavy, um, utterly impenetrable to play these days but they represent a direction that first person shooters could have gone and they are excellent in their own rights it's just they're not nearly as immediately accessible and excellent as doom and all of its clones that came after it so b squared is doom and everything and everything <laughs> everything else is you know <laughs> what came after that that's yeah that's my analogy for all you rpg fans out there <laughs> And so yeah, that's the way that the the history of Red Dwarf pans out over over time. This is nice. Uh, this is nice. This little. Oh well, yeah, it massively, massively dips right at the end, but pulls it back in, in the last three episodes. Um, but yeah, the um, we were concerned before the poll started um, that it would just be so different from previous polls because we changed the method. For anyone that doesn't know, previously we asked people to list every episode in order from top to bottom, which was obviously a big ask of people. So we made it simpler this time round and did marks out of 10. But um, any fears that the results would be too different were quite clearly allayed when we decided to plot all the polls on a single graph. <laughs> and the results... Quite literally scared the shit out of us because we were picked up like how similar we have done it wrong. All how the data is incorrect. Oh no. <laughs> no matter how we do it, this is our result. It's almost like a it's like a, a fixed point in uh it's like a it's like a nexus point. Like this is what this is what we will all tend to now. This is the this is the it won't shift any more than this, really. I mean there's a couple of little tiny little changes. And then obviously the, the the shift between um, uh, seven and eight moving because of the new series, but like pretty much like consistent. I think that's a good thing. Spider Man yeah. pointing at himself meme. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's yeah. Um... it's great. It just it's weird how it's still it still worked that way, and it just yeah, it's, it's odd. But, Despite there oh. being like micro micro surprises here and there. At the end of the day, the shape of Red Dwarf is very clear. Fans, yep. you know, this is our big moment. This is like we're not so different, you and I. You know, the, <laughs> the GNT, the GNT regular who posts a fresh meme 
for like half a fucking year on it on GNT forums is just the same as a Facebook normie that shares, you know, would anyone like any toast every day? Yeah. You know, what you're all the same. You're all exactly the same. You're all as pathetic as each other. <laughs> <laughs> and we agree ourselves in that. Hey, hey, hey guys. Hey, guys. listen. Oh yeah, and back to reality. Back one. to reality one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we could we could easily talk about the coral canvas all night, but we have a lot on our agenda for the evening, and we're already over an hour in. We're massively <laughs> overrunning. Uh, but later on, later on, we'll be taking your live waffles. So have a good old think about what red dwarf questions you want to ask us. But first, it's nearly time for the very exciting Closhbusters, uh, which will be starting right after this break. Don't go anywhere though. Shit. No. Wrong. I know, I know, I know. Hit transition again, hit transition again. No. no. Sorry. Oh, we're, we're... The, the wrong. The, that is the wrong video. Everything's fine. <laughs> oh, my fucking Christ, what is going on? Now my Discord crashing doesn't seem quite so <laughs> I'm going to cry. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> I know what I've done. Hang on. It's just a. It's just the wrong video file. So, I mean, what I've done, right, is the wrong video file. So, uh, how is everyone? <laughs> how, how's your evenings going at home? <laughs> After these messages. No, for fuck's sake! <laughs> It's like Paul Rudd playing the clip from Mac and me every time he wants to play a clip on the... <laughs> Listen, and now please we... stand for the national anthem. We've already got... I knew the start of the stream was way too fucking smooth. <laughs> These people, they've been, they've, they've, yeah, they've been watching for an hour now. They're in. I love they're, it. Get rid of them. they're only, they're only going to be kicking around more for this. Oh man, oh, it's a real Mickey Mouse operation. Blah 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 blah. blah. You remember when um, UK TV did that? Um, did Vindaluna, and we all took the piss out of them for <laughs> for fucking up their live stream and cutting to the yeah, live you <laughs> And and we don't even have like a cat trying to get into a takeaway box, do we? Um, <laughs> after these short messages, please. please. Okay. These misguided individuals and some of their curious adventures aboard the Red Dwarf are available on VHS from BBC Video and a salutary lesson to any self-respecting space cadet who's looking for the meaning of life. This is because the Red Dwarf crew have never ever been acquainted with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't panic, because this invaluable tool and its remarkable stories are available on Earth in three formats, video, CD, and cassette. BBC Video, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. It's looking so dirty, what are we gonna do? Jeff Micro Liquid, where are you? I'm Jeff Micro Liquid. Okay, I'm small, but I've got micro power. With one tiny capful, I clean... These misguided individuals and some of their curious adventures aboard the Red Dwarf are available on VHS from BBC Video and a salutary lesson to any self-respecting space cadet who's looking for the meaning of life. This is because the Red Dwarf crew have never ever been acquainted with the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't panic, because this invaluable tool and its remarkable stories are available on Earth in three formats, video, CD, and cassette. BBC Video, the answer to life, the universe, and everything. It's looking so dirty, what are we gonna do? Jeff Micro Liquid, where are you? I'm Jeff Micro Liquid. Okay, I'm small, but I've got micro power. 
With one tiny capful, I clean and dry to a brighter shine. That's micro power. See what I mean? Just micro liquid, where are you? Coming! Just a couple of drops on greasy dirt, and I give a better clean. Better, got it? Everywhere. That's why everyone's shouting. Just micro liquid, where are you? He outshines ordinary liquids. Hey, P. Remember the good old days? On the farm? Remember your pod? And all the little peas that you grew up with? Don't you miss them? Right, next. Hey, P. Remember the good old days? Nobody makes peas mushy like bachelors. All right! Whoa! I can't go out like this, man. I mean, I'm naked. Sure, I'm smooth, but I need a look. Aha! Now, let's see. Stripes. Ugh. Red? No. Check's quite nice. Oh, no. Ah! Can I get away with that? Of course I can! Wow! Cooler than a snowman's cold bits. Polo Spearmint. Cool look, cool taste. Wake up, Commander. Wake up, Commander. What? Time for bed. Don't forget, clean your teeth and wash behind your ears. Try this, new McLean's Whitening. The advanced formulation helps fight black and used daily gently restores whiteness too. Look. <laughs> You're a computer. Oh, never heard of computer dating. Don't wake up. New McLean's Whitening, for a brighter, whiter future. See this old table? I'm gonna sand it down. <laughs> Not with sandpaper, with this. With sand plate, you sand to a perfect finish in a fraction of the time. There's a sand plate for every sanding job. Shake hands. Big or small. And when you're finished, your sand plate won't be. Next. New sand plate from Sandpick. One at a time, please. Danger. Do not attempt to open this part. Generations of Time Lords have battled to contain the galaxy's most fearsome forces of evil. Exterminate! Exterminate! But the pod in which they are held is breaking up, and time capsules known as home videos are being released into the Earth's atmosphere. The Daleks will go on! It is your duty as a citizen of this solar system to track down these capsules and neutralize them through your VCR. Many modules are already circulating, and further releases are imminent. You have the power to protect your universe. Hello, and welcome to Closhbusters, a brand new and entirely original Red Dwarf quiz game that has started with not a single hitch in the technical <laughs> process. Uh, we're joined tonight by three of the finest minds who happen to be free on a Wednesday evening, ready to play the game that tests whether two heads are better than one. Let's meet the contestants. Playing solo with the White Tails tonight is Jason Smedley from South Yorkshire, while on the blue team we have Nikki Hutchinson from North Yorkshire and Quinn from London. And it says here, small talk with the contestants. So, hi contestants. Hello. Hi, Bob. How are you all doing? Welcome, you, welcome to Closhbusters. Um, I'll start with you, Jason, beneath me and on your own. Uh, Jason... Tell us a little bit about what your your various projects within the Red Dwarf fandom are. Uh, my projects, I am admin of the Escape Pod Red Dwarf Smeg Post in Facebook group. And I've 
set up a bot that's uh, Red Dwarf on this day on Twitter. Tweets out random dates that, uh, you know, when, when episodes first aired and when Auntie Maggie's birthday is, things like that. <laughs> uh, and uh, I made, I think my, my my most successful thing, I made the, um, what do I call it now? Smegamix, which is every smeg in Red Dwarf. I think every smeg. Every time I watch it, I see one and I think, did I miss that? And I go back and check, and it is in there, but I'm sure I will have missed some. Uh, they all fade into uh, to one eventually. Um, can I just say, Escape, po- uh, Escape Pod Smeg Posting, literally the only worthwhile Red Dwarf group on Facebook. It has funny things in it, <laughs> and I recommend it well. Um, on the blue team, uh, hello there, Nikki. Hello. You uh, you stream and stuff as well, don't you, Nicky? Not necessarily Red Dwarf stuff, but you have you have your projects on the internet. Yeah, I do. Um, I'm sort of co-host of a series called Light Inbox, which is mostly focused on Sonic stuff. But I've, I've done other things. I've done um, so Lego animations and things. I've been a part of GNT a few times. I've often contributed many waffles to you men. Oh, yeah. um, I also was the one to tell you that the Red Dwarf website was down and none of you guys realised for a bit. <laughs> a real Mickey Mouse operation. as we yes, It has miraculously returned and updated yes. within the last hour and a bit. Who yeah, and, uh, by the way, it is my mascot, so if anybody wants to see it, it's fine. Yeah. It is a worm. Theme of my YouTube. Yes. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, Quinn. Long time regular. Oh, uh, J- sorry, Jason has a mascot as well. Lift it up a little bit higher over your yeah. nameplate. There you go. Uh, I'm going to be really let down if Quinn doesn't have one, even though we forgot to tell you to get one. <laughs> this is this is my mascot. <laughs> there we go. That's what's gonna, that's what's going to bring you luck this evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Quinn, have you got anything you want to plug? Because everyone else is plugged. Uh, not currently, unfortunately. <laughs> There's not a lot that I do within the fandom other than um, post on GNT, really. Um, I help I help mod the, the, the very small Discord server, the tank, uh, which has got a few fans floating around in it. If, we, if anyone else wants to join, you're more than welcome to. Yes. I can post the link over to GNT again. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we mostly don't talk about Red Dwarf, um, but every time someone new turns up, we inevitably talk about Red Dwarf for about a minute, so... Yeah. Very nice. Well, we've met the players. Now let's meet the board on which they'll play. It's there. No, it's it's there. <laughs> uh, the blue team will be attempting to fill in a horizontal line across the board, whereas our solo player will simultaneously try to create a vertical line. Uh, they do that by answering questions on the buzzer. The first to give me a correct answer will win the hexagon. Uh, you'll see when we get started that each hexagon is lettered. Uh, the contestants can pick which one they want to play for, and the answer to the question will begin with that letter. It's the best of three, uh, with the winning team going on to the very exciting goal run, where they would win fabulous prizes if this was an actual television show rather than just a bunch of people on the internet. But still, <laughs> let's play Plushbusters. Um, it, we'll play it in a minute, I just need to restart it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. Listen. Uh, I'm not the way about this problem. Uh, uh, by, by the way, uh, Capsi and Danny are still here. They're just not on camera anymore. And, and yeah, for the better. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, I'm just muted. Well, I was. Okay, they'll talk if they God for that, my letters line up with my buttons now. Okay. <laughs> Let's play Clash Busters. <laughs> Sorry if that was a bit loud. Oh, well, we couldn't hear it at all in the Discord, mm. but hopefully the people at home did. <laughs> they, they would have fucking heard that, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, fingers on buzzers. Uh, anyone can answer any question at any time, but if you get it wrong, then it passes over to the other team who will be able to hear the full question. Um, now, normally, whoever answers each question correctly will get to choose the next letter. But for this first game, we're taking a random letter, which is T. So, let me <laughs> scroll down to the T section of this spreadsheet. 
just as Bob would do back in the day. <laughs> okay. So, fingers on buzzers. What tea is a brand of hot sauce that Lister uses to add pep to his cornflakes? And that's the blue team. That was me. Uh, Tabasco? Is correct. Ah. Excellent. We have our first blue on the board. Uh, Quinn, pick me a letter. Uh, we'll go L, please, Bob. L it is. That's earlier than T in the alphabet, so I will scroll up. <laughs> A, B, C, D, F, G, H, G, H, G. Quick fingers on buzzers, everybody. Uh, all to play for. What L was an English comic actor, writer, and director? Best known... That's the blue team. <laughs> I'm going to have a guess. Is it Lee Corns? That's incorrect. And the white oh. team will get the chance to answer the... will listen to the full question before giving their answer. So, Jason, what L was an English comic actor, writer, and director best known for his partnership with Oliver Hardy and a wax droid fighting on the good side of the wax war? Uh, Laurel. Correct. So White has blocked that their uh, line that the Blues were trying to make, and Jason, you now have control of the board. Choose a letter. Okay, I'll go straight down for a B, please. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. What B can be a novel, an episode, or a consequence of a little nibble here and a little nibble there? <laughs> That's the blue team, and I've lost my sound, so I will just restart my Clushbusters app to hopefully get that back for next time. Uh, blue team. Uh, that is backwards. Correct. Hey. Okay, blue team, your turn to pick a letter. Um, uh, Nikki, which way do you want to go? Uh, can we go for D? We can go for D, yeah, that's FD. You would like for D. Yeah. <laughs> what D? Fingers on buzzers, everybody. What D is uh, a first name shared by the protagonists of two Grant Naylor penned sci-fi comedies and is also the name of a TV channel, Blue Team. Dave. I... <laughs> Could you repeat that? You dropped out slightly for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dave. You're correct. Very nice, very nice. Three on the mm. board now. You've got a clear path. What letter would you like to go for next? Uh, I think A would be sensible. Okay. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. What A is a classical epic poem which, in comic book form, white team... Ooh. I've lost it. Oh. Uh, I'm afraid that the blue team will get to hear the full question before answering. So, what mm. A is oh. a classical epic poem which, in comic book form, contains the dialogue Zap, Pow, Kasplat, Die in Bed, You Trojan <laughs> yeah. Pig Dog? I remembered it just after you passed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nikki, I think and Quinn. I've got that. Yep. Nikki, have you Nikki, have you got that? Or... No, um, can vary. Do you want to... right. Okay. So, well, in that case, then I'll go. Is it is the Ili Iliad? Is that spelt with an A? Incorrect. I'm afraid the answer oh. was the Aeneid. Aeneid. Similar, mm -hmm. but different. Mm. Okay. Uh, fingers back on buzzers. We'll go for another A question. Mm -hmm. What A? is a term Lister advises Crichton to use when he wants... That's the white team. Um, I didn't mean to buzz that early, but I think... Uh, <laughs> asshole. Asshole. Asshole is correct. The term <laughs> Lister advises Crichton to use when he wants to be extra mega polite to Rimmer. <laughs> well uh, intercepted. You certainly know your assholes for you, from your elbows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Jason, you have control of the board. What letter would you like next? Uh, I'll go for C. Good. There's mm. not much scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
What C, fingers on buzzers everybody, what C is a moon of Jupiter that was host to an android uprising in the 22nd century? Blue team. Ooh. Is it Callisto? Well intercepted. Yes, it is the moon hey. of Jupiter that was host to an android uprising in the 22nd century where Haley Summers was offered a dream job and where Peterson picked up a Marilyn Monroe droid. Mm. So... Blue team back in control. Pick me a letter. Uh, I think we should go J. J, it is. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. What J is a long haired, jobless figure? Or, or, oh, blue team. Jesus. Jesus. Double Jesus, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It was double Jesus. <laughs> it was yes, a double yeah. Jesus. Okay. Another Georgie Jesus. Blue team on, with you the majority of uh, of tiles on the board, but yet to make that vital connection. So pick me a uh, letter. Hmm. Right. I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna go for V. That's okay. V. It is. Fingers on buzzers, everybody. What V? is a country in which the average rainfall of the oil blue team Venezuela correct hey. the average rainfall of the all rich coastal lowlands is 3.4 inches and look what's happened to the board it's very exciting it worked it works hey. it worked. No, thank god for that well okay done. <laughs> So, we have a flashing blue board situation, which means that potentially the blue team are just one away from completing a line. Uh, Jason, do not be despondent. If you get this question right, you could block their move and force them to reconfigure their path. So, pick me a letter. Uh, I I think it should be you. Uh, Nikki, are you okay with that? Yeah, go with that. Well, yeah, we'll go it's, you. Got to, it's got to be one of you two that chooses it. It can't be me. <laughs> oh, I see. I see you on the letter. You. <laughs> Brilliant. What you? And this question's for everyone. Remember, what you did Lister and Cap do to someone's pie, which resulted in a blue team? I eat it. That's Clashbusters. <laughs> Let them enjoy it and we'll enjoy the silence. <laughs> Yay! Okay. That is the end of round one and it goes to the blue team. Uh, so far proving that two heads might well be better than one. Uh, but we will see. There's still all to play for. Uh, there could be potentially another two games in this if Jason manages to claw one back. But... If the blue team win the second round, then they go straight through to the gold run, and Jason will have to resign his post as admin of the escape pod. Make <laughs> <laughs> posting group. Yeah, did we mention that, Jason? Actually, yeah. <laughs> it's a high stakes game here, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Can can I not make an excuses, but can I just chest how responsive my buzzer is? <laughs> uh, Capsy, can he? Yes, At go, this stage? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. That was oh, pretty okay, instantaneous yeah. as far as I could see, my Go friend. On, give yeah. It, give yeah. it another one. Give it another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quinn yeah, I must have just, just missed out on a couple of those, I think. Oh, Quinn. Quinn seems to be very quick on the yeah, draw. So he's, he's a drummer. Yeah. Yeah. He's famously, <laughs> he is a drummer, according to his, his username everywhere. So, yeah. <laughs> there's a, there you go. There's a drum kit. Yeah, there's <laughs> proof. proof. If proof be needed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we had to see you actually play it, but we'll see. We'll take it. <laughs> anyway, fucking, uh, we're ready to go again. Let's play Closhbusters. Oh, I'm going to press play. What the fuck was that noise? Anyway, uh, I think the sting is finished for the people watching on YouTube. It has. Uh, <laughs> We have a. a oh, okay. Well, good. Uh, we have a a flashing light has been selected for us by the supercomputer that hosts this uh, software, um, and it is a you again. So, it's all up to you 
the contestants to uh, listen to this question, buzz in, and see if you can answer. Fingers on buzzers. What you should only be green if you're Mr. Spock? And that's blue. You're in. Yeah. Correct. And you're in trouble if you don't get the next question <laughs> correct. Uh, or something. Okay. <laughs> blue team, you have control. So, uh, what letter would you like to choose? Uh, R, please. R. What R is Space Corps Directive 68250 Impos... And that's the blue team. He's a rabbi. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, one live chicken and a rabbi. The answer is indeed rabbi. Oh. Two for two so far. Jason's buzzer definitely working. We, uh... <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to test it again, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> the second no, no, letter. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, another letter, please, blue team. Uh, S. S. What S in the Red Dwarf universe has been known to contain fried eggs, bananas, <laughs> Blue team again. Sandwiches? Correct. Mm. Not as people in the chat are suggesting smeg. That is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, fried good. eggs, bananas, crisps, and sugar puffs. We have a very neat pattern in the middle of the board. Uh, mm. Blue <laughs> either side. So pick me a letter. Uh, let's go F. Let's Ooh. go F. Okay. What F is a popular sport which, according Blue... Hmm. Um, it has an F in, but I'm not sure. Is it zero-G football? I'm afraid I cannot accept that answer. Ah. Because it doesn't begin with F for a start. I know. I, just, <laughs> I know. So... <laughs> yeah, sorry I thought this was going to be a double play run but whatever <laughs> well let's rotate the board no, uh, Jason you get the opportunity to hear the full question uh, which F is a popular sport which according to Kevin Keegan and or Joe Clump is a funny old game football <laughs> it is football <laughs> the whites are on the board <clears throat> And, Jason, you have control of the board. What letter would you like next? Um, I'll go for an L. L. Right. L. Okay. What L is a polite euphemism for the vagina, as used by Crichton in The Promised Land? White. Is it Lady Garden? There's a man that knows his Lady Gardens. <laughs> Lady Garden is correct. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's not looking so much of a blue whitewash as a, mm. as a white whitewash as well. So, Jason, you're still in control of the board. What letter would you like to go for next? Uh, I'll take Y. Uh, not keen on the way that you phrased that uh, so that I couldn't make a joke about the word why, but well, that's exactly why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which why, everybody, is the day before the day before tomorrow? And also the name Blue. Yesterday? Not yesterday. I'll probably bug that up. Correct, it is yesterday. No, it's correct. Yeah. <laughs> the day before, the day before yeah, tomorrow yes. is yesterday, and it is also Very the name fun. of a newspaper on Backwards Earth. Uh. <laughs> and so, back to blue, back in control. Which letter oh. would you like? Uh, C. Uh, C, 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 of all we. <laughs> what C? Is a white-hatted ponce. 
Blue. Chef. Correct. A chef is a white hatted punts. <laughs> I say, Capsy. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> we have a flashing blue situation once more. But <clears throat> if uh, Jason manages to get this question, then we will have a very interesting situation. We could possibly be in with a double flasher on our hands. Uh, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's wait mm -hmm. and have the letter picked for us by the blue team. Uh, go on, Nicky. I'll let you pick. Just, a, just an aside. I've just noticed that the black, the board does look like cock and balls. Oh, yeah. that is true. The flashing <laughs> you had to has bring it up, didn't you? You, you just had to bring it up, didn't you? Uh, well, I should have had that on the original show. Just like some like, <laughs> backstage interrupting Bob Holders to point out uh, <laughs> cock and balls, cock and balls I mean, situation. What? I mean, was it was it on daytime TV? Could they get away with that back then? <laughs> uh, it was the Wild West on on Central in the in the late eighties. <laughs> uh, All right, picking? Uh, Nikki's picking. Yeah, well, okay, I'm gonna go for um, H. H. <clears throat> okay. What H is a space bar where Rimmer once started a brawl? And it shares its name with a real-life Manchester nightclub that Craig Charles and Blue Team... The Hacienda. That's Flashbusters. <laughs> it's really anticlimactic not hearing the music. And, uh, I'm sorry. Imagine it in our heads. Just watch, watch and the, also, watch I the think... pod. <laughs> I think Capsi pressed that. I just see the audio levels on the mixer. In the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, watch the levels go up. I pressed that. I got too excited. Right. I pressed that before before Bob. Before confirmed. I did my dramatic reveal, yeah. but yes, that was the fucking correct answer. Well done, everyone. <laughs> right. I mean, that's it. Two games played. Two games won by the blue team. Closer than you might think, um, judging by that statistic. Because, like I say. With that question, it could have been all or nothing on a decider had Jason got that right. Jason, you answered very well. Your your buzzer, while functioning perfectly, just wasn't uh, as quick off the mark as <laughs> Nikki and Quinn managed. Um, but have you had a lovely day? I have. I've had a, a brilliant day out, thank you. <laughs> and now, <laughs> you must leave. <laughs> Uh, don't actually leave. You can stay around, but uh, <laughs> like, in re in real life, you're not going anywhere. You can stay. We're not kicking you off the Discord or anything. But uh, we are now going to prepare for the gold run. Um, and the blue team, as the winners, uh, it is obviously one of you who will be doing the gold run. Uh, so uh, choose which one of you is going to take on that famous climactic round. Hmm. Should have been easy, Nicky. Really. We should have done it, shouldn't we? Do you want to toss Say a again? coin or something? I can. <laughs> just, it depends. You know, do you, do, you, do you want to put it on me for it all balls up, or do you want? To... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm happy to take it if you want. Uh, I mean, you've been such a quick-witted man. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So. Quinn is taking on the hotspot right. uh, thing. <laughs> I just need to Sorry. make sure that I can read all of the board. Right. Because we had that issue earlier on, didn't we? Do you want to make your uh, Discord thing? I mean, I've got it as big as I can get it. Yeah. Um, so we will... As, as, as a great man once said, full screen or fuck off. <laughs> I mean, it is full screen. It's just not filling up the entire screen. No, well, well, we have we'll we have out, catered this. We? <laughs> so yeah. in in the show, uh, in the real show, uh, contestants were given sixty seconds uh, to do the gold run. We've graciously extended that to ninety seconds because uh, we're on the internet. We might have things with, like you having to squint to see what the actual letters are. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be lags. There might be delays. So we're giving you an extra thirty seconds. Uh, it's a similar board to before, except that the tiles all have multiple letters, and therefore the answers are all multiple words. The aim is to make a line from left to right, and you'll have exactly 90 seconds to do so. 
if you make it across the board within a minute and a half, you will win absolutely fuck all, <laughs> except the satisfaction of a job well done and a more heartwarming end to this section of the dwarf cast. <laughs> so, are we all ready to play? We are. Can, Can I? You before we do, before we do start, the only one that I can't see is the four letters in the second column. It's the only one I can't read. So if you can read that back to me now, then I'll. You make a very good point. I need to switch to the right uh, tab. Um, that is T P B R K. So yeah, right. let me write that down. <laughs> so, <laughs> avoid avoid that particular landmine. I think. T P. But if you do, if you do need to touch it, you can just say the one beginning with T. If you should you should you choose, just say that one. TBPRK. Yeah, no. TPBRK. Okay, cool. The rest I can the rest I can read fine, so it's just that one. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Well, if we're all ready to begin, then all that's left for me to say is good luck. And your time starts you. when you give me your first set of letters. Uh DBB. That's, or is that OBB? That's OBB. OBB. Apologies. <laughs> okay. Restart the timer, Capsi. I certainly will. I'm okay. Going. Cat's nickname for Kachansky. Uh, Officer Bob Babe. Correct. Uh, GSD. November the 25th in Red Dwarf Law. Uh, Gispacho Soup Day. RK. Correct. The Cat's Wild West Alter Ego. Uh, Riviera Kid. SK or SH? SH. Resting Place for Electronic Devices. Uh, Silicon Heaven, CB. Crichton's information about Rimmer was filed under this name. Oh, Captain Bollocks. That's Crush Busters! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, what? what you, a had performance. <laughs> you had 90 we seconds. We had Bollocks. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you had 90 seconds. You cleared the board within like 30 seconds. <laughs> we didn't need to give you any extra time. You absolutely aced that round. <laughs> I did, thank you. Ah, and Ian's crashed. Ian's crashed. And Ian's crashed. Oh. <laughs> More times right. than you. Um, just sing this at X81. Yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. 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 Yeah, Jason is now presenting. I'm going to switch. Uh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go audio only um, for a bit. All right. No, I'm back. I'm back in the thing. Hey, there he is. Look. Okay. Well, I'm glad that happened then and not like six <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the middle of the thing. <laughs> um, well done. Absolutely fantastic performance. Uh, all delighted. The only sad thing about it is that we didn't get to use the uh the bad ending music which uh danny prepares so beautifully but hey maybe we'll <laughs> we'll stick it out as an easter egg at the end. <laughs> um but no blue team um nikki and uh quinn quinn got all the uh the glory by putting himself on the hot spot um but it was a team sure. effort you both answered questions <laughs> very well as did jason uh fantastic performance all around thank you all so much for taking part uh, you may now go back to YouTube and watch the rest of the show there. Uh, many thanks also to all our viewers uh, watching at home. Do join us after the break for some delicious waffles. And until then, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, that work. That is not working. That is not working. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one we want. That's fine. Mute the microphone.
then we will talk. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're just trying to find the uh, right bit of the video. <laughs> you can hear us if you like. Uh, we're talking to you right now. Uh, we're just waiting for the right bit of video to come back. Do you know, we've been doing podcasts oh, for uh, how long now? Yeah. 17 years? We've we've never had to do uh, videos no, before. So it's a whole... It's, if this was if this was audio only, then it would be working exactly as planned, right? We just hide them, I just edit out all the all the shit bits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Takes ages. Also, doing this live as a video might have been two steps too far. <laughs> <laughs> We're slowly learning that now. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Uh, what are people it's saying? This in YouTube the shit, isn't it? <laughs> well. Abigail Brady says vision mixing is a forgotten skill. Oh, mate. Oh, God. I've got, I've got uh, flashbacks to DJ. It's not fun. <laughs> Unrumble says having this on Zoom at least means we don't have to worry about the Chinese delegates bringing two cars. <laughs> <laughs> Ross Baker just says going well, then. <laughs> Buzz Bomber does say if this was audio only, the game show would have been significantly more difficult. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> And slow motion uh, atomic bomb says it would be better if it was a parody of Call My Bluff instead. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what the did well, what the did well. <laughs> but anyway, we appear to be back, back in vision, back in action. Um, so I'm now going to return to my script. Welcome back to the live Ganymede and Titan 35th anniversary dwarfcast. Um, if you've just joined us, firstly, we're sorry. Um, secondly, we're all still reeling from the statement that came out from Robin Doug earlier this evening. Uh, and if you're yet to hear the news, the statement reads to fans, cast and crew and everything in between a very smeggy 35th birthday. Fingers crossed for more. Much love, Rob and Doug. The significant part being much love, Rob and Doug. Um, I imagine we'll be returning to this topic in our next section. Uh, where we take your questions on any and all Red Dwarf related comments. So type your comments into the YouTube chat now, right now, this bloody instant. I've got a As question. We... Wait, I haven't finished my script. Oh, sorry. As we begin the section of the show that we like to call Ah, so you're a Waffleman. Waffleman. Waff waffle waffle what? And here we are, here we are now pretending to do this badly when we've just. <laughs> I have just been doing vision mixing terribly. Um, my 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 waffle question to you, Ian, is: I don't have the statement up in front of me. Do they use the word "and" or the amp or an ampersand? <laughs> uh, so it is the word "and." Yeah, as you, you'd expect, as you'd expect. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, Christopher W possibly the aforementioned Wickham, Wickham yeah. um, says I think this whole thing would have been livened up no end with some Red Dwarf themed maths puzzles <laughs> well, now, <that's... laughs> we were talking beforehand about if we do another game show what should it be and the challenge of making Countdown fit into a Red Dwarf format is something that we are very interested in <laughs> <laughs> My absolute dream would be to uh, to do a Red Dwarf version of Bullseye. How on earth that would work is another matter, <laughs> especially uh, over the internet. <laughs> but... so, so the 40th anniversary live stream we'll do in the Eggbeth Arms. Um, we'll book it <laughs> yeah. out, book out the whole plate. Hang on. There is a dartboard. There is a dartboard, yeah. Although we could, we could just have brought our own, so that's not a deal breaker. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Um, okay, <laughs> we've got a few proper waffles. Uh, Samuel, Samuel H. Diamond asks, uh, my question is, Jif Micro Liquid, where are you? <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Is it Jif well, Micro Liquid now? Is it Sif Micro Liquid? That's the it is now Sif Micro Liquid, yeah. even though the inventor of it says that it's pronounced Jif. That's controversial. <laughs> <laughs> um, Right, we have got lots of of questions, lots of things to talk about. Um, regarding the uh, the statement, uh, Ross Baker points out, fingers crossed doesn't actually suggest that things have been sorted, does it? Um, Fair point. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's a fair point. I mean, fingers crossed means that like hopefully we can get this thing sorted. But like it 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 just speaks volume. It, it's a positive. It's more it's more than we've heard in the past. Is in as much as you know. Mm. Well, there's two parts to this, isn't there? There's there's the legal wranglings and and Rob and Doug's relationship, and there's also you know being commissioned and that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, we I think we have to take this statement as being a Grant Naylor Productions is back on track, kind of a kind of a, a statement. And then at this point, there's probably like the whole the whole like three specials thing or whatever the hell mm. was supposed to happen. Clearly, that would probably need to be reshuffled. Or you know, so they just don't know. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I I yeah. think yeah. What it is is there are certain things that are out of their control that yeah. determine yeah. whether or not Red Dwarf gets made again. But the fact that they have their fingers crossed now, <laughs> whereas there was no hope whatsoever at one stage. Yeah. It basically, yeah. They they have said fingers crossed means we hope it will get made. There is hope. Mm-hmm. There is a chance it will get made. There is a chance yeah. that more would happen. Yeah. Um, which was not the case two years ago when this legal action started, for sure. Mm-hmm. And in the wider world, like I I would maybe assume that like either Rob or Doug could write a novel. And probably not have much problems getting it published. And if they did, then um, Unbound or something like that would very clearly be successful. You know, so like there's yeah. there's lots of things that they they'd be able that, that are in their power to just do. Um, but I guess the TV, the TV show is the is the headline here, and they they know that that's the thing that everyone wants. So mm. yeah. yeah. Well, Paul Hughes. Uh, that's Clem. Hello, Clem. Um, would it have been better if it was signed Grant Naylor? I mean, that would have that would have blown my head up if that had happened. <laughs> that, would, that is definitely well, never. I, I think I think we I think we can assume that's that's that, probably yeah. not going the, to happen. But. The Gestalt entity that is Grant Naylor is dead. Yeah, <laughs> but it Rob like and train. Doug is better than nothing. That's what <laughs> I was getting that... at with the ampersand. If it was the ampersand, it would suggest co- collaboration. Oh, that ampersand. Oh, I see. Uh, that yeah, was also, I, I was looking at the other and, oh, uh, but yeah, that is also that not is an also ampersand. Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, they, they are clearly not, that. it is not Rob and Doug, it is, you know, Granella Pickens. If it, it's no longer yeah. eating itself. That is, that <laughs> is the big... If it, if it was signed Granella, the implication would be that they were writing together. The, the more would be something that they did together. Mm. Having Rob and Doug listed separately yet together uh, implies that any new Red Dwarf would be from either Rob or Doug, or both, but not together. My dream, like, the ideal scenario is, like, clearly they're never going to work together again. Oh, I say clearly. I'd have said this morning that they clearly never put a joint statement out again, but <laughs> they have. Mm. But, you know, uh, realistically, if we can't have Grant Naylor writing Red Dwarf, then having both Grant and Naylor writing Red Dwarf, why not have two concurrent Red Dwarf series? Not, it's not like as if we haven't had like two yeah. books written by each of the authors. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, we know, like, Doug has had six series worth uh, and a special of what happens after series six. <laughs> like, if they take the, the backwards and last human approach, then... then uh, uh, this... <laughs> This approach into the gloop could end up being. <laughs> um, it, it is worth it. Like speaking of into the gloop, it's worth us looking back on the Holly Hop convention and what they said at the time. And what they said at the time was, everything was signed. We want Doug to be able to direct, write, and continue making yeah. TV Red Dwarf. So at no point, I like as Rob presumably wanted to like kind of step into that episode so we could assume right from the off i guess that doug dwarf <laughs> is the main temple of granilla productions again that's what they could try to get made and everything else is you know a bonus i guess you know my dream is tv doug books rob and let, let's just carry that on as long as we can yeah I'd love and that. possibly radio rob as well but radio, you know yeah all, all we hear is radio rob rob <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> Radio Rub Rub. <laughs> uh, oh, we're live, aren't we? Shit, I forget. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right, listeners are going down. <laughs> <laughs> it is a week 
like <laughs> we yeah, are going to just bollock on until we fall asleep. I don't yeah. care if anyone else is still watching. <laughs> um, but with red hot content like this, why would anyone leave? Phil Paget asks another waffle for you. Which of the three of you would be the last man standing in hand to hand combat? Oh my word! I would say Danny. Yeah, I would say Danny. I think there's raw strength there. That uh... I think I'd be the first out. I think it's between the two Yorkshire heavyweights. <laughs> Cheeky fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, do you know what? Like, amazingly, like. We've we've never had fist fights in our in all our years as friends, apart from the one time Ian woke me up and I was asleep on the sofa and I just instinctively punched him in the face. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but other than that, so you know, I won I won that one because I got to go back to sleep. Um, yeah, I Danny. Yeah, I think I think that da- 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 you've definitely you've got the strength, Daddy. You also go to the gym far more than me and Ian go to. The uh, gym. I mean, I went to the gym. Like exactly. exactly. Far more than either. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, two, <laughs> two related um, waffles. Uh, Tom Selinski asks, uh, "What single episode would you pick to someone who had never seen Red Dwarf before in the hope of getting them into the show?" And it's tricky. It is a tricky one because yes, you probably wouldn't start with the end. No. Or would you? I wouldn't start with the end because it is so different from everything that was to come that it doesn't show off Red Dwarf at its best. Yeah. I it seems, yeah. I get annoyed, though, with that attitude with other things. So, like, when if someone says, oh, um, Parks and Recreation is really good, but just don't bother with the first series, and I'm like, y- yes, mm. the first series is a way off being as good as the others. However, you need the you context need of the first yeah. series. Yeah. <laughs> So it is a different. I mean, yeah, but Red Dwarf is a little bit more self-contained than that. So, my advice for anyone would be: start with the end and carry on, and go all the way through. Build yourself a spreadsheet. Watch everything in order, including all the DVD extras in the order that they were released, all the specials, all the books. Read them in the same thing because that is the way my brain works with any new thing. But the the hypothetical of so someone might be doing that at some point in the future, but uh, you need to hook them in and make them want to do it first, <laughs> rather than throwing someone in at the deep end. What episode from within the run would get someone going, yeah, I want to watch this show from the start? I think Future Echoes is a good one to demonstrate the whole sort of sci-fi yeah. aspect of it, but sort of thanks yeah. to the memory, again, would be one of those ones where it's like, look what they can do with the, look what they do with the plot, look what they do with, you know, like... They they create a who done it where the, the the suspects are already in the room like and they don't know they're already the suspects so mm. it's like it's 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 a sci fi who done it and I think it's perfect so it, like in terms of it, and it's really good because it's really good character development as well you talk about Listy you talk about Remy you talk about you know you've got all you've got all the beats yeah. of every character there so that is a that is a good in you could you could show someone thanks to the memory as a as a as a starter yeah. and then show the other ones as like to just fill it out. Because it teaches you about the characters as well. It's not like it's not like you know you, you have to have a baseline. Like it it does all that for mm. you, which is I think yeah. one of the things that's so great about it. I think Crichton has got to be up there. I th- I, th- I think you do have to start with a Grey series episode. I, I think that Grace. may be a must. You know, I was just uh, yeah, I was just pondering that because you've both gone early. Mm. You've both gone series one and two, which oh, is I yeah, backwards. <laughs> I can <laughs> well back backwards is designed to be a jumping on yes, point. It is, yeah. Siren Sirens is designed to be a jumping on point, even yeah. though you're jumping onto a slight change in the format. Yeah. But yeah, I as brilliant as I think those series are, um, I would go five or six for sure. Probably five because it's on Red Dwarf and it's got Holly in it. Um maybe quarantine. I was gonna say I was thinking doesn't need you don't need to know the characters in the same way you do with Back to Reality. It's the funny. Yeah, scenario. it's interesting because quarantine does. Although Rimmer like is on the wrong foot completely. With a bit, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that's well, true. Well, that, that's the only one that you. Everyone else is. You get the idea of who they are by you know the way they react. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's back. Back to Reality is not a good in. This is the thing that a lot of, like it might be the best and episode, but it's not. Times, it's yeah. not a good in. Yeah, I don't think it's a good in for the characters because it it. It's, you, it's need so know, you need to know. You need to know things. Yeah. yeah, 
it's so much better if you already know how they're going to react to something and then you know Dwayne Dibble is funny but it's funnier when you realize how the cat has progressed over that time that's that's yeah. the thing yeah I and think... for context yeah the, back to reality was the first episode that I saw and it got me hooked into the series but the crucial point there is that I was seven and the thing that got me hooked in was uh, the funny man with fake teeth saying, Dwayne Dibley? Where am I Dwayne Dibley? I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. But it was it was funny to a seven-year-old, and so therefore it got me hooked. I then later appreciated back to reality for what it was, which is not just a man with funny teeth <laughs> saying funny <laughs> things. Um, there are so many questions coming in. Yeah, we'll um, it, yeah. So let's let's rattle through some waffles oh should we say um, that any we don't get to we'll put on our spreadsheet for dwarf cast and oh uh, good oh, show 100%. yeah because we've been low on waffles in the past so yeah, yeah let's yeah. do that we're waffle um, riding right now yeah <laughs> not not so much a question as as christopher w pointing something out tom uh Selinsky, who answered uh who asked that last question uh, Christopher says, uh, after all the discussions about Big Finish doing Red Dwarf, should you take this opportunity to mention uh, to mention it when we have an actual Big Finish writer in the comments? Uh, hi, Tom. Please, could you tell um, Nicholas uh, Briggs? <laughs> is it Nicholas Briggs or Nicholas Pegg? I always get them mixed up. Nick Briggs. Nick, Nick Briggs. Is yeah. the is the Big Finish man? <laughs> Please tell him to make Red Dwarf uh, for Big Finish. Um, Check in with Granada Productions because apparently everything's fine now. Uh, they've got article. their fingers crossed. So we've got a great article that get you started on a few ideas. Um, for, for... And if you, <laughs> well, if you need any ideas for an episode, then there's a whole thread in the forum. <laughs> and we also have AI generated ideas for the episodes. If you really get stuck, uh, I'm particularly keen to see the Marlon Brando episode uh, <laughs> translated into audio form. <laughs> He did, he did he did kill him you know he did, I did, he did. Him, you know. yeah. Yeah. Uh, get right on that he says excellent <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm i'm way back because i'm scrolling yeah good uh, see me scrolling <laughs> okay yeah. Uh, Philip Hawkins, if a company like Big Finish did do Red Dwarf Audio dramas, do you think it would be in continuity with the TV show or more like the books with its own separate continuity? I'd like that. I'd like the, the latter. Um, I'm not sure what they'd do. A potential yeah. retelling Infinity style, but mm -hmm. in the audio medium. Well, Ooh. take 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 Rob's take Rob's gloop setup, right? Like he he set up a multiverse with with that it, as yeah. as a silly and as relatively throw away as that as that ended up being because it didn't go out there into the wider world apart from the script but yeah i, I think having just just you just pick up in media res it could be on red dwarf doesn't matter it's just it's at some point after that gloop the inglupening <laughs> and the, the and the many different um yeah universes that would be very much the big finish way uh mm -hmm. because they do love to find to so take on to take on gaps in continuity and to <clears throat> every one of this, like <laughs> every time the TARDIS um, dematerializes and rematerializes, they speculate that what if <laughs> this adventure <laughs> was jammed in, in the time it took Tom Baker to cough in 1973. Quick, I mean, Chris Eccleston goes off for of shit and he could have gone on all sorts of adventures. <laughs> There's definitely scope for like Mac doing um, a spin off on the Oregon. There's no reason why that couldn't be a thing. Oh, um, was, was was Hollister a cat? Was Hollister on the Oregon? Well, he said he, well, the I, well this is, in, in my head, that's the head cannon is oh, that he I was like the that. captain of that ship, which no, is why he wouldn't he, have been the he, captain. Maybe he would have been like like an officer. Like maybe it was before yeah. he was captain. Maybe maybe, what, maybe he was the donut boy. Maybe his actions on no. on the Oregon saved the ship from the rabbits, and then he was promoted, given his own command. Yeah, so you're gonna say he ate, he ate the rabbits. He, he ate the rabbits because he's just so ginormously fat, and he loves eating food. <laughs> he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, let's have a rescue of 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 Hollister. Like, let's rescue that character. Yeah, because the the last we saw of him was being sort of very cowardly, and it just doesn't fit. Well, it's better. It's like I I, I it's like funny, I, like, I, I do it's like funny, the it's Mac and everything. I get it, but just for me, just well, he did die because there wasn't any glass in that escape pod. So. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. Talk about flaws. <laughs> um, Andy uh, Holland from the fan club. Hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. Uh, a similar question to one we had earlier. Um, which Dave era episode would you suggest to someone who stopped watching after series six or possibly series Ooh. eight? I.e. Someone that hadn't seen anything of the Dave era and we wanted to show them. That's good. My, my instinct is Skipper, which is obviously it's just <laughs> it's just been placed as the top Dave episode in the poll. But mm. if someone is familiar and a fan of the original series, that's the fan service episode, isn't it? It's, it's nothing but fan service. Yeah. And Norman has a good turn. I mean, it looks like a scrotum. <laughs> he looks but... terrible, but he's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then Promised Land. Promised Land's got, got all that. It's got better Norman. Um... It's too long to be a uh, an introduction piece, I'd say. Mm. Yeah, but people watch films all the time as introduction pieces, you know? Trojan. Yeah, no, yeah. Fuck it, yeah. Because Because that is, I mean, for anything else, it is, like, discount Back to Earth. Trojan is the start of the new era because Back to Earth was an aberration, regardless of what you think of its quality, it was different. Yeah. Um, Trojan was a statement of intent, first to be shot, first to be recorded in the in the modern day, in the classic style. Um. And it's funny. First to be broadcast. And the moose stuff shows you that the the characterization is spot on and the characters have picked up exactly how you remember them. Mm. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. yeah. Right. Good. The answer was right there in front of us this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Jess says this discussion is irrelevant. The only true jumping on point for Red Dwarf is beat the geek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one day we'll do a we'll do a video on that. Uh, Nikki from uh, Closhbusters, <laughs> aka Worms T Seventeen, um, is there any type of reminders from Red Dwarf's past that you get sick of hearing again and, and again and again from the characters in later episodes? Uh, E.g., how Rimmer killed all of the crew. So I guess the back references, the common back references. We don't tend to get many though, do we? Like it's a bit of a. It's usually an event when it happens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hard to... The problem that we always run into when we're discussing the Dave era is that we simply did not watch it to death as children. And so I can't recall exactly (laughs) in the same way that I can with series one to six, but nothing feels particularly overwhelming. I can tell you what um, the type of back reference that I really don't like, and that is the one where... Doug has got his law wrong. Um, yeah. For example, turning Kinnisawari names into an entire language in barely a joke. Um, yeah. He fixes that, actually. To be fair to him, he fixes that. With Equa Hente. Uh, with Equa Hente, which is spectacular. And the, and the Begs. Um, yeah. And the Begs, yeah. yes, as well. Um, and things like forgetting Ace Rimmer exists. Um, <laughs> like yeah, oh, there's, there's, there's sometimes the... a weird discontinuity with the yeah. original series. Like making a joke about Rimmer's last words being mummy, mummy. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I know it's a joke, but it's like, no, no, it's right. I mean, it's right there. You you know, reference Gispacho, do it properly. Um, So maybe, like, I, I don't know. Like, there's there's nothing specific that, specific reference that annoys me. It's just maybe sometimes how it's done is a little bit slapdash. Mm. Yeah. Uh, 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 I accidentally scrolled too far. Jesmond Tutu. Uh, hello, Jez. If, he's from the. He's still in the fan club. Yeah, yeah. He's ah, still in the fan knows. club. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're well out of it. Uh, if each of you had a gun to the head and had to. Uh, is it one gun each or between us? It would be, uh, uh, the bullet could all heads together. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to, uh, what one thing would you retcon about Red Dwarf? Oh, mm. I would 
So we're talking I mean, about like a relatively small detail that's changed for convenience, right? That's what a retcon is essentially. At its core. Not necessarily a small detail. Yeah. Okay. Like the, you've got um, what's it called, Chuck Cunningham syndrome, um, which is I was just happy uh, days. yeah, the a character from Happy Days who was there in the first two series and then just wasn't there in the third series. <laughs> um, um, and like never seen again. Yeah. He, he never referenced again, and um, like his family remains in the show, his parents and his two siblings remain in the show. And at some point later on, the parents make a reference to their two children, right? <laughs> like completely ignorant. Well, so yeah, that is that is an example of a retcon. Okay, series fourteen, episode one. It opens with Snacky, and everyone treats him like he's been there since the very beginning. <laughs> he's basically Dawn, uh, the uh, Buffy sister. In, in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, she's there, and everyone thinks she's been there forever. Same with Snacky. We'll retcon Snacky into everything. <laughs> yep, I agree with that. I would, I would, I, yeah. I'd, I'd remove the Dennis the Donut Boy <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's the one thing I would remove from the whole. But I would, I would just remove that because that—that's the one thing that really pisses me off about, like. <laughs> But how do you retcon? Character. How do you actively retcon it, right? Because it has to be in a future episode. So yeah. I mean, the, the, the way the way you do it is you just ignore the fact that he ever said it, in the same way that they ignore the Which fact that kind of, you know, yeah. or, or you, like, you go up into a group to, universe. Because I always thought that was just like when you when you first hear it, you could hear it as being him just joking about mm. for the sake of the thing. But he, he it's, I know, it's it's, I'm, I'm getting it's to it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, he wouldn't do that. In a, you know, no one else is going to hear it other than him. Um, but yeah, I just I'd remove that and just you know, like the fact that he worked his way up the system is just like that's yeah, it, just, it really really great. So it's like almost like it's meant to be a twist, and it's like it's not a, it's not a good twist because it doesn't do the character any any mm. it doesn't make the character any more. Yeah, um, to me anyway, it doesn't that, make it more likable or or related. It detracts from the character. From the character, if anything, it was a retcon in the first place mm. because mm. there was no. You know, no indication in, in any of his previous appearances that he was anything other than a proficient and competent captain. I mean, yeah, I mean, Doug has this 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 tendency to do this with every series of like putting some really big character twist. Mm. You know, listed his own dad. Uh, we we knew that, but like he didn't really explore it. We kind of left it alone. We just assumed it was just left alone, and they kind of shone a spotlight on it. How and there's a woman's dad not being Rimmer's dad, and blah, 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 you know, mm. and 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 Rodon being uh, the cat's brother. I mean, like that's, that's the been worst. New. That's, the worst that, one. that's not a thing because what they've been living for three million years as well, have they? Have they? <laughs> and they've managed to meet up, have oh, they? Well, it's really? A, it's not so much. No, the it's three not the three million. Years. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more the than... it's the two hundred years in deep sleep in Sirens, the journey back in Nanaki. <laughs> And apparently in Crisis, they mentioned that they dip in and out of stasis all the time in between adventures. So, yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, just don't like it. Although slow motion action bombers, uh, slow motion atomic bombers just said Dennis the Boy is the reconstructed holster, not the original. Now, that actually is a bit of a, uh, that's a okay. bit of a, I can, uh, can get on board with. So, thanks for that. So, the, the nanobots literally fixed that automatically. <laughs> yeah, so the nanobots seem to think that uh, Captain Hollister that had the humble beginnings of Dennis the Donut Boy, where he's scared of being, um, of being um, exposed, would make for a better captain than someone who just went, <laughs> went up normally. The nanobots know best. Well, they're wrong. They are incorrect. <laughs> they were incorrect Talking with a lot of things, such as Red Dwarf having a prison. But there you go. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's lots. There's lots of like. There's lots of explanations in the chat of like they could meet with Cat's brother Juice, the thingy what's it wrong that makes coincidences more likely. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah yeah. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Yeah, yeah yeah. As long as it's funny. I know you could explain anything where with oh it was the is like the once the quantum rod got involved, Doug could do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> In quantum rod. The um, quantum rod is Doug's gloop. No, I don't mean <laughs> the quantum rod. Quantum <laughs> rod. Uh, if we weren't live, I'd make such a great joke. Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of slow motion atomic bomb, uh, he or she or they say, uh, given Robert's apparent issues with the mask, do you think a Crichtonless dwarf? And a return to the original cast could work, or is the character too strongly established now? It could certainly work. I would. It. I mean, obviously, it has worked in the past that we've we've had it without crying, but I just think it would just. It's such. He's such an integral character now. It would be almost impossible. 
unless they found a way to keep him in the show and not have him in the mask like he was I don't know. Wouldn't it be like, weird if um Crichton, the character that killed Holly <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> then then is like you know in in the show a lot less or or in a different way, and then just as Holly's coming back, like they can never. Oh, <laughs> only be one. It, all right, here, here's me. Here's my here's my fan wank head on. Is uh, oh, basically what Not happens is that Crichton has to um, uh, upload his um, his brain into the mainframe, and he is the Holly from then on. Oh fuck! Oh, <laughs> who's the Holly? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, Holly. sorry Norman. You've been I mean, yeah, place yeah, welcome yeah. back. However, <laughs> I mean that seems easier than the whole body if you just got crying. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the uh, that, that's my that's my my fan. And it could be a, a therefore a CG, you know, motion oh, capture. It could be, oh, it would be like a they look like Max Headroom, <laughs> <laughs> but Max Headroom in that horrible uh, TV interruption that happened in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, don't don't search for that if you're planning on going to bed anytime soon. It's yeah, it's awful. <laughs> um, I think it could work, but I wouldn't want it to. Yeah, I, I wouldn't that's, want. That's it. That's it. I don't see the point of doing a series that doesn't have all four of the main four in it. There'd have to be a very good reason why Robert wouldn't be there. Yeah. Mm. Um, it would be the worst reason as to why he I was going to say it'd be sad no matter what. Like, oh, I'm not. I can't yeah. do it for health reasons anymore. No matter how you know mild or severe yeah. those health <clears throat> reasons might be. Yeah. Um. That would just any any type of that thing would be sad. I, I think you recontextualize him. Maybe maybe we're making too much of the fact that he struggled in the mask. And maybe he'd be absolutely he, fine. He happened, to be, he happened to be ill during yeah. the last one. Exactly, like related. yeah, there was a flu that just like you know there there was a you know well there wasn't a bug going around when they filmed it, but it could have been like some sort of proto COVID. I don't know, yeah. um, and um, and could have been yeah, yeah and nobody. mask technology like they could they could really simplify the suit like it doesn't really matter. Just give him a nice nice comfy suit. It doesn't matter if he looks different. Just anything. I mean, he looks different in every possible. virtually every series anyway. Yeah, so that, yeah, you know, that as well. True. Yeah. Make it more comfortable for the lad. Yeah. There was a point during Promised Land where I thought, just for the briefest moment, that that, that is what they were doing. Hmm. Um, at the end, when Crichton powers down and he end up he ends up requiring the Anubis Stone in order to to come back to life. Basically, I thought, shit, they're killing off Crichton. They're they're giving him a farewell and if red dwarf yeah. carries on it will be without him and mm. then like 10 seconds later it was resolved but yeah. I, it was like it was like Crichton's uh, glimpse of the future in duck soup where it all just sort of flashed <laughs> past me and i was like oh my god this is what could happen <laughs> mm. yeah. there was there was a there was a point in that where i genuinely did think we were going to kill him off and i was like yeah i was yeah quite upset. i mean anything I could happen because one. like when you, when you get into this the this almost like post series special era of a show and like i feel like a lot of shows have had this like only fools and horses like it could finish at any point like you you're in the end game when you when you when you when you when you resort into specials every few years you know so it, it gives it gives it an extra like jeopardy that you wouldn't really get even with back to reality or out of time because they're part of a series and when they're part of a series there's almost like a a, a formula that's almost like a safety net but like but yeah like you know if we have another special now or let's say they announce they're filming three specials immediately i'd think that the fucking last special could be deliberately the mm. last one you know like who knows Visually, anyway yeah yeah, yeah. Ooh. uh okay Philip Hawkins, how should they bring Kachansky back, and who should play him? Well, I, I'll answer that in two parts. Yeah. One, Donna Di Stefano should play her, <laughs> the best, the best of the original Kachanskys. Um And the how they should bring her back is that they shouldn't. <laughs> I, should you, should she always have a hat that's like is she is she like the uh, like Wilson in the uh, Home Improvement? She's always got a hat. Just constantly like this, like you never see them fully. Like, yeah, and she's not allowed to speak. Uh, because I... that way that she's not got the same voice either. <laughs> I maintain that uh, last human Kachansky could work. 
you approach the character with a bit more fucking respect and it kind of fixes her a little bit because yeah. in the in last human she was respected by rimmer for, for her rank there's a tension there and also some respect between them uh Crichton didn't seem to give a toss about her existence and it's perfectly fine with her being there as he yeah. would be um and um lister you know lister's got some extra dimensions you know got got some you know extra shit to do like he's she, she's the best thing about last human i think um so you, you could definitely do it like that whether chloe annette is particularly that character whether she could do that character is another thing i'm not entirely sure i know the answer mm. to I suspect maybe not because she... i mean chloe annette herself like apart from anything else hasn't been a working actor for quite a while right yeah um so, and so any any appearance of chloe annette will would have to be uh back to earth style <laughs> cameo i mean there is, there is the one thing of like kachansky is one of the unanswered questions that's out there like how the promised land answered the question of what happened to the cats what happened to kachansky after back to earth is something that was that was implanted as a running thread throughout series ten, and then forgotten about completely halfway through. Because it had to, yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they had to get rid of two planned episodes, and but they never brought it up again in eleven or twelve. Mm. Um, so it is an unanswered question that I wouldn't object to being answered in a special. But uh, it's perfect for a to, special, right? Like, but, she... to, but to to have her as part of the ongoing crew. I wouldn't want because it would change the dynamic and I don't think there's any point of doing Red Dwarf doing the classic televised Red Dwarf in any other configuration than we've already got. Um so the question <laughs> the question would be how do you bring her back as a one off? Because you'd have to kill her off again or send her away. Something push like push her out of an airlock. Something like they're on they're on the trail, they've they found a trail and there's um, maybe audio messages that she's left, like she's in some sort of trouble. So she's an audio only character through through this. And so you could have Chloe doing that, just do a few vo voiceovers. And then it, in the end, it turns out that she's long gone. Like she like she went into a black hole um, and and Lister comes to the end of his search. He has some sort of epiphany, um, snogs Rimmer, uh, credits roll and Kachansky is never talked about again. I I think that's a, very I mean, unusually that's a really a good idea minute. for a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all it all it's the all idea, about the idea, of, the idea of chasing a a, a recording and yeah. then listening to a, a, a story being unfolded as you go is a really cool. I play a lot of games really that have like audio it. logs scattered about the place. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Like a lot. But yeah, it feels it also feels incredibly serious and like to the point where like the devastation of the ending would be like I don't know how the hell yeah, it like would that. be a bit much, but then I guess like the Red Dwarf does have the ability to take something heavy and just kind of like somehow manage to make it feel light, like the like like um, Yeah, I know what you mean. Um Lister's son dying in uh, future echo. Um like I guess Lister's already kind of had this goodbye with Kachansky and back to Earth. Um, I don't know, like like really sad stuff kind of happens in Red Dwarf, but it, it manages to brush it off quite well. I don't know. Mm. Uh, such as ejecting uh, a woman out into <laughs> into deep space ten minutes after meeting her. Um, you know, I don't know. It's definitely it's it's like. It's an interesting problem for Doug to tackle, and I'd be very happy if he has the confidence to do that. But it's 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 hard. It's hard. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's that wouldn't be, yeah, far yeah, harder be than doing the cats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, We're talking about new red dwarf lads. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> talking about it as if it might happen. Yeah, not yeah. that we think it will, but, but just it that might, it might. It might happen. Is a huge improvement on. Earlier this afternoon, yeah, possibly <laughs> never happening again ever. <laughs> we'll take. Uh, it. I think it is. Well, I know it is nearly half eleven. We should probably think about wrapping up at some point. But we've just got. We'll have a few more little questions. I think. 
um, because I want to uh, mention Paul F. I'm not going to attempt your surname, but Australian Paul, who's uh, a great supporter of uh, GNT, left a comment um, the other day because he didn't want to, to not get his question in. Um, I've forgotten what that question was, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to go into the DMs? <laughs> no, it was on. It was a comment on GNT on the uh, Pearl Pearl, uh fucking Pearl Pearl, Coral Canvas coming post. Uh, but he's he's sent another one in the chat. So uh, he asks if we could take out the Taiwan Tony part of Fathers and Sons, how high would you rank the episode? Ooh. And yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah. It would clearly be a top tier episode if yeah. that section was because Tao and out Tony and the not... rest was given a bit more time to flow. Yeah, T- Tao and Tony is is not just you know Ke- Kerry Shale's punchline uh, of a performance. It's it's the third of the episode. Like it's a build. There's the whole build up to it. It's all fucking pointless. Yeah. Um. So yes, it would massively go. I mean, God, we've got one of the best guest stars or guest performances. Um, mm-hmm. Amazing character law stuff. Like basically fixes a robberus or like justifies a robberus. Yeah, mm. I mean it's great. The d- the double Lister scene is yeah. like it's not quite up there with the double Rimmer scene, for instance. But it is yeah. such a dwarfy concept, something that mm-hmm. you can't picture any other show doing. It's executed really well. Yeah. Yeah. It is just so badly dragged down. Yeah. But I think the same is true of Entangled. Um, if you lopped off the last ten minutes, <laughs> it would it wouldn't it wouldn't be a faultless episode, uh, but it would be a really really solid one. It's just that it Thing is, turns to Doug would absolute know that diarrhea. Well. Doug, Doug yeah. would definitely know that because because he had to change his last ten minutes because he couldn't work a yeah. a. a, um, a gorilla and they impersonated to death <laughs> i mean yeah i mean when i saw that episode because that's the one of the ones i saw live and when i saw that episode the last 10 minutes weren't there and it we had no idea where that could have gone mm. other than the fact that there was potentially you know a chance of happening or and then it just kind of and then the end of the episode is just uh yeah, a mess it it's just a mess yeah. you can t- it, it, it's a shame that series you know well, series ten in general just got like mm. incredibly knackered with with everything. Um, it's a shame. I just always wonder, like, what? Like, I wouldn't be averse <laughs> to Doug doing ten again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do over. Like, yeah. just fix it. Just remastered. Just, like, yeah, just just sort that out. Like, read that read could... what, your original idea. Do it. Do a George Lucas. I'm not fussed if you do a George Lucas on on series ten. Go for it. You do. You do your. You but do you your know thing. what? We're talking about Butskis, and we're talking about Big Finish, and we're talking about the fact that Red Dwarf's future, you know, it's it could be partly carrying on the TV show, it could be something else, like maybe the missing episodes, the lost episodes. I mean, I know that, you know, Big Finish have literally done that with um, Doctor Who, any scripts that went unused uh, during the, the classic era, for whatever reason, mm. they're, they're dusted off and polished up and turned into audio dramas. Um and Red Dwarf has done it with Body Snatcher and with Identity Within. Like, yeah. why not make the, the Red script. Dwarf movie? <laughs> why not make the Red Dwarf movie as a um, as an audio play or a novelization or whatever? Mm-hmm. Like, basically, what we're saying: if anyone um, who signs their name but without an ampersand is uh, is listening and watching still, a go to bed. You're very old men. Uh, B. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, we want we want to see Red Dwarf coming out of your buttskis. Uh, the sky is the limit. Like obviously, the TV series is one thing, and we would love that to continue for as long as is humanly possible. But there is going to be a point where it's no longer humanly possible. So, yeah. what else is there to explore? I mean, the, the other the other avenue that could potentially go down, and this is something that I would kind of like, would be like a sort of. Uh... An anthology of mini ideas that were translated into, you know, like uh, in the way that the Animatrix did it for the Matrix, and the way that mm, um, sure of Love, Love, Death, and Robots with Red Dwarf, basically. Is what, I'm, what I'm kind of getting at is just like little micro stories set within the universe that could be about 
you know, a Mimus or whatever, but it's all done kind of, it could be done however, whatever style is required for that story. Um, but that's a really, that's always been one of them, my ideas. I was like, that's really nice to see. And I'm not talking mob episodes. I'm not, you know, obviously we wouldn't go down that avenue, but like the idea of having sort of pseudo CG kind of, you know, settings and, and all the rest of it, obviously we've seen it can be done with Back to Earth. So we know that we can get the environments and, the, you know, um, I just think like an anthology series of animations that within the Red Dwarf universe would be quite a cool idea to explore, mm-hmm. like the birth of Crichton, that kind of thing. You know, the mm-hmm. idea of like where where Crichton came, like how Crichton was built, how how Diva Droid started, how you know all these little mini ideas you could do. Um, yeah. <laughs> what if they animated some classic scenes and you could download? Them? Um, <laughs> and better still, a Christmas special of original material. <laughs> I just love the yeah. idea of just having just yeah. Uh, aside from all the obviously the other animated ventures they've tried, but I just think this scope. I think this scope for a really nice, dynamic vista. You could do the Red Dwarf origin story in that style, and I think it would work quite well. You get the original cast of voice it. You don't have to worry about sets. You just build them in the computer somewhere. Somewhere down the line. We will have the first. I, I imagine we'll have the first Red Dwarf thing released that either doesn't have the main cast in it or doesn't have the main characters in it. That mm. almost certainly will happen if if Grant Hill Productions is able to keep Red Dwarf going as a going concern. Like first first part of call is get some get some TV stuff in because that's how that's how Grant Hill Productions knows how to make its money right mm-hmm. or, you know uh, that's how it knows how to do its bread and butter stuff and then after that like absolutely they will be thinking about like what happens to Red Dwarf after this cast stop doing yeah. it um mm-hmm. and I am very excited for like what that could be like especially with both of them thinking about it. I know they won't be doing it together, but I'm assuming there'll be some sort of coordination of just like, you know, I'm doing, I'm pulling this direction, you pull in that direction. And, you know, that would be great if they can, if they can agree between them, this is your area. Mm. You do that. This is my area. I'll do this. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Well, with exciting (laughs) possibilities to contemplate for the future, which is, like we say, not something that we necessarily thought uh, would be the case <laughs> at various points in the last couple of years. I think that's a good note as ever to end this gargantuan live stream. <laughs> um, on this, an unexpectedly dramatic and exciting uh, Red Dwarf anniversary night. Uh, certainly not the uh, topics that we planned to cover. <laughs> any more than like fucking minutes before we came on air essentially <laughs> um, but yeah uh, thank you all so much for joining us it's always really special to get together for a live thing um, we love seeing the Red Dwarf community come together uh, whether that's for a new series whether that's for a big event or whether that's just for hey we've decided as fans that we're going to celebrate this anniversary and so let's all do it together it's been a lovely day uh well it's been a very stressful day for us as we've shut ourselves into this uh (laughs) into this live stream but the the wider red dwarf community had a lovely day i'm led to believe yeah i'll catch up (laughs) catch up with it all now (laughs) yeah yeah um Thank you for watching, and if you have enjoyed the show, uh, we would welcome donations uh, for a couple of UK-based charities that mean a lot to us. Absolutely no pressure, because we know that times are tough at the moment for all of us. Um, Namely, uh, the Trussell Trust, uh, which uh, helps to uh, feed hungry people, basically. Uh, That Mm -hmm. one would be in memory of Seb Patrick. Uh, And there's also Mermaids, uh, which is a charity that helps... uh, transgender people particularly uh, young transgender people uh, and obviously the news in the UK at the moment has been grim on that front in the last few days um, and that would be in memory of Philip J. Reid who uh, who nominated a, a similar charity but in, in the US as, as his preferred charity um, check out the links in the description and while I'm sounding like a proper YouTuber don't forget to give us a like uh, hit the subscribe it. button smash the f- fuck out of that bell uh, if you want a notification when we, when we go live again 
um, which will be for the 40th anniversary or for the next <laughs> new episode of Red Dwarf, whichever comes sooner. Um, that was a joke when I originally wrote it, but actually <laughs> we could be doing a, a commentary or a live reaction to a new episode. Who the fuck knows? So... Uh, but in the meantime, there are plenty of news, features, and non-live dwarf casts to keep us all entertained over at www.ganymede.tv. Uh, you have been watching Ian Symes, Jonathan Caps, and Danny Stevenson, with special thanks to our Closhbusters contestants, Jason, Nikki, and Quinn. And of course, <coughs> I'll cough. And of course, uh, another big thank you to our lovely live viewers and commenters who have kept us going. And. As always, Ed bye, everybody. Ed bye. Thank you for listening to GNT Dwarfcast, and we hope sometime in the future you'll decide to listen to our Dwarfcast again. Have a safe onward journey. Goodbye. Goodbye.